This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Nice is this? We've got Urchel starling with some nesting material. Oh, it just dropped all the little sticks now. How beautiful. But you can see the beak is wide open and it is very, very hot here today. And I think it's busy doing a pretty much a gula fluttering, otherwise, he's just trying to cool down on a very hot day here at Juma in South Africa in the Sabi Sands. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Cedric, and behind the camera here with me on Wendy, we've got Gert. And of course, once again, we are joined by the special guest, uh, Paul Ngumani from A Bird Alive. Good afternoon, Paul. Uh, afternoon, afternoon, afternoon. <laughs> well, it is our last drive for the birding uh, challenge. Challenge, yeah. And uh, well, I'm hoping this afternoon we can get some more birds and to see what else we can find. But I think we've been, been well, we've been doing pretty well with the bird challenge. I think we've had quite a few species. Mm -hmm. and and uh, as you know, it is a big birding heritage uh, challenge, if you're not too sure about that. So we're trying to get as many species as possible marked down on an app called Birder and to see if we can kind of increase that. Maybe today we can yeah. put more birds today. But of course, joining us on uh, the safari this afternoon on uh, Rusty, we're going to have a Taylor and a Panda up in Pridelands, Rexon and BK, and all the way down in the very wet Eastern Cape in Amakala. I'm not too sure, they're not going to be out as of yet because it's raining quite quite a bit down in the Eastern Cape. And, but if they do come and join us, it is going to be a Rolf and a Morgan. Well, as you can know, or as you know, this is a live and interactive show. So we've got comments, questions that you want to send through to us. If you are watching on the Wild Earth app or website, um, make sure that you do register so you can send those comments and questions through for us this afternoon. Oh, we've got a nice little bird. It looks like uh, some uh, woodupoos there, eh? Is it that cementable? It's, it's common cementable. Common cementable woodupoo. Mm. There it is. Look at that. That's a new one, eh? Mm. It's a new one for the list. Mm. Mm. It's a Lengoshoko in Impedi. Lengoshoko. Lengoshoko in Pedi. Lengoshoko in Pedi. Yes, Nice. I don't know what you call it in, uh, in uh, Afrikaans, or, and there's, of course, English, uh, common cementable, but longo shoko mm. in pedi. Mm. Lovely. You can see with that long, thin beak looking in all the little holes and crevices for some lava, for little insects, maybe some caterpillars that's busy crawling around there on the leaves. So, yes, it is in search of some food. A little bit smaller compared to the other species, which is the uh, the green woodupu. The green woodupu is also a little bit larger, and also the green woodupu is in a family group. So you'll usually see three, four, five of them together. Where, of course, the cemetable, you most of the time you see them uh, mm. alone, solitary. Mm. And they don't have that big striking beak like the green woodupu. Where the green woodupu has got that big, beautiful red beak. Nancy, good afternoon. Yes, we're going to do more birding, of course. Bird is the word. Bird is the word. Indeed, Nancy. Thanks for joining us. Looking forward to this afternoon. I'm not too sure what else we're going to be doing. It is so hot. Nice just to sit in a bit of shade here. We're in the shade of an apple leaf. And we are, of course, here on the, this big open clearing just south of our camp. And you can see this beautiful marula tree in front of us where that cemetery was busy feeding. But yeah, I'm looking, uh, looking forward to the, today's drive. Maybe we get to, I know it is uh, Paul's last uh, drive with us uh, this afternoon. So I'm holding thumbs, crossing fingers that we can get at least a cat for Paul's show because Paul said he's really, he really wants to see a leopard or a lion. Um, so yes, let's see if we can pick up on something like that this afternoon while we do birding. So That's yes, we can do. It'll be fantastic getting a leopard with some birds fluttering around the leopard. <laughs> It'll be two, two birds with one stone, as they say. Huh? Mm. Yes. 
but it's a hot breeze yet this afternoon. It's a very, very warm breeze. I'm not too sure Taylor's plans. I think Taylor might be heading over to some of the places, maybe to some of the dams. Well, that's also our uh, mission for this uh, the, for this afternoon is to go and take a look around at some of the water holes. Mm. Some of the virtual starlings as well, all just all just taking cover in these canopies. Yeah, of course, this is looks like a gardenia. And in the canopy, they all in the shade. Oh no, this is a cemetery, huh? Is, no, is it's this... a virtual stalling at the bottom. No, at the bottom yes. is the uh, is hornbill. Can't see nicely. Oh, there's a hornbill. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Sorry. Yellow bill to hornbill. I just see. Horrible. And cement bill above him. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I can see it there now. Sorry, I'll get my, my binoculars out and to actually get to see uh, that hornbill. But it actually looks like a red bull hornbill, not a yellow bull. I think it was a red bull. Yeah, it's a red bull hornbill where it flies. Oh, we yeah, have red bull. Yeah, it's two of them. Two of them. A pair. Mm. Oh. All right, uh, well, we're going to sit here. Let's go take a look at the weather today. It's a sunny afternoon here at Juma, as I'm sure Cedric has already told you. We will be pan and dam hopping until we can find any kind of bird. My name is Taylor McCurdy and on camera with me today is Panda. And just like I said, we are here at Juma Private Game Reserve. And by now, you all know Andrew, who's basically <laughs> my co-host and also a naturalist of wild earth. But uh, he's, yes, he's here visiting, so I'm going to let him give a chance just to talk about why he's here. Oh, for the last time, hello. This is my last drive on Wild Earth. We've been here for the last two and a half days celebrating birds because it's Heritage Month and we have our campaign to celebrate our natural heritage as well as our language heritage. We have our campaign with the Birda app, B-I-R-D-A, and everyone that logs at least 12 species and joins the Heritage Challenge uh, will trigger a donation to my organization, which is BirdLife South Africa, and that's for our campaign to give names to all of South Africa's birds in our 12 official languages, so everyone has a name for a bird in their home language. So join us along the way. We're going to be spotting some birds and also some other wildlife, and I think we're going to have a great drive. I think we need to give a last one last leopard for Andrew. We're going to try that. That would be fantastic. So we, we actually we stopped here, and this is a great pan, and I'm upset that we haven't got any more birds around here because it's perfect. It's shady, there's overhanging branches, there's water, obviously, and uh, there was one bird when we arrived, but it has now flown away. I think, as you saw this morning, <laughs> we're going to be having a lot of that. There's plenty of butterflies, but uh, I think we're going to start butterfly drives and arthropods from tomorrow, um, at least properly. Oh, there we go. There is a bird that has just flown into the top corner over there, one that we have seen. Oh, sorry everybody, our camera glitches every now and then, and this is what has happened. It's actually a game. The game <laughs> is... <laughs> talk about what, um, what bird we saw. Unfortunately, there's nothing we can do. We actually need to reset the camera right now. Um, before we can continue, but it's so hot today in the low felt that some of the equipment is uh, malfunctioning. So we're just going to wait until we're able to send you to somebody else. Right, off you go to Cedric and we're going to do a quick reset. Oh, not great with the camera, but anyway, let's see what we can get here. We've got a little stienbocky. I just want to see if we're in the shade. Right there. Oh, nice female stienbock. Good luck on the camera there. Hello. Oh, 
of course, while it's busy eating there, it looks like there's uh, a lot of that uh, devil's thorn, those creepers that's actually at the bottom. So sometimes eating the little leaves nice and palatable. Oh, got a little bit of a fright there. Sorry, Gil. Because one of our smallest antelopes that we do have around here. Steenbok, and of course you've got the Daker, Klipspringer. But luckily these ones. Maybe it might go lie down in the shade there. And of course, having a little bit of an ear, an ear scratch there. Nice there. A little bit of an itch behind the ear. Oh, there we go. Maybe go and rest in the shade because she's definitely enjoying a bit of shade there on this hot afternoon. Good idea. Instead of going to sit in or stand in the sun, I'll just take it easy there. Wind still coming up again. I know they say tonight is quite windy. Tomorrow is going to be like gale force wind uh, uh, weather wise aside. So, yes, I think, uh, I don't know, maybe a little bit of a front that's coming through once again, but uh, we shall see. But it's a hot wind, it's not a cool wind. That's only a thing. When it was a cool wind, it would be a little bit easier. to show you the forktail drongo but we have found a couple of smaller birds in the form of I was going to say wax bills but I feel like they was bills 
because they've most <laughs> flown away. There's a couple <laughs> left though. And uh, just pecking around in the grass. So if it is uh, your first day with watching us participate in the birding challenge, just make sure you click on challenges and scroll down quite a bit until you find the heritage challenge. And then you can start logging. Yeah, a lot of these birds you'll see when they're not uh, pecking at the ground they'll have their beaks hanging open and they'll just be walking around with beaks open. That's because it's so hot here at the moment on Juma and the birds, birds don't sweat in the way that humans or, or some other mammals do. They have evaporative cooling off the surfaces of their mouths so they uh, evaporate water off the palate and they hold their beaks open and that's how they cool down and that's why also birds have to drink so much when it's so hot. So I'm just trying to point to Panda just quite low down in this tree Panda if you drop it a bit and then if we can maybe go right in you could you can potentially see a little bird right there moving you got it there you go Panda's got it now very hidden though under the branch and there you can see exactly what uh, Andrew was talking about with its beak agape almost doing a gula flutter. That's it you got your terminology spot on. You say you're not a good birder. Ah, uh, you, you hope so. <laughs> you would hope that I sometimes know what I'm talking about, but it's not always the case. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this rattling cysticata is also doing wing drooping, which is helping to ventilate the area on the sides of the bird rather than holding the wings closed. It's allowing that really nice cool breeze coming through to cool it down a bit as well. So this bird is literally doing everything it can right now, sitting in the shade, gula fluttering, and wing drooping just to try and stay cool on this really hot afternoon. You, you've you missed that it's also try, d dangling desperately to the branch. <laughs> it looks like it's going to get blown off. I'd probably take that if it meant that I could cool down. Yeah, that's exactly why we're spending this time at these pans and these shady spots just to see what the birds are up to. Now Victoria is wondering if any of the big cat species go for birds as prey. We actually had this question yesterday and we had a lovely conversation about it, Victoria, but we're so happy to answer the questions again. But you're gonna have to keep watching more regularly, I'm just saying. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, so yes, the answer in short is, is absolutely because predators are opportunistic and they will never say no to a meal regardless of what it is. If they can catch it, they will eat it. Uh, so younger, younger big cats, uh, when they're learning to hunt and sometimes they're left on their own, you can imagine a bird definitely gets their attention. Just like if you've watched The Lion King, how the lion cubs like to stalk Zazu quite a bit. <laughs> um, obviously we know lion, lion King is a fantasy and most of the stuff that happens in that movie doesn't happen in the natural world, except for that. That, that definitely happens. Um, I have seen lions chasing vultures. You, you often see pictures of lions eating vultures. They'll eat guinea fowl, any other ground dwelling bird, but literally whatever they can. There are some smaller cats, however, that are specialists at catching birds. So a uh, serval is known to be the best. I mean, African wild cats, uh, black-footed cats, and, and of course a caracal. They are more than capable, but the serval's got the shortened tail and very powerful hindquarters, and they'll leap out of the long grass and snatch birds as they are trying to fly away. They, of course, eat lots of different things, though, but it's, uh, it's something that they are good at. And I'm, I'm sure you've seen it at home, how house cats, of course, go out and... Well, they also try and catch anything that moves. Moves, sorry, but birds typically on the menu. Very nice little thing. Okay, let's carry on. I'm hoping with this hot weather and down this road that has got lots of pools of water, we might get lucky with elephants. So, on we go. In to a big dam where quite often I sit in the afternoons and we sit there for about an hour, an hour and a half waiting for it to get cool enough to go look for other animals and that's where we're going to head and maybe we'll be lucky there because it's also under a fruiting jackalberry that was I'm sure was a cuckoo that's just flown off. Oh. Anyways, we've been seeing lots of cuckoos, uh, so we'll, we'll keep an eye out down that side too, because that's where we had the red-chested cuckoo calling yesterday morning. We still are. We so desperately put at least one cuckoo while you're here. 
yes. on camera. Uh, but uh, they are notoriously difficult to do so. But we'll give it our best shot. Also just going to keep an eye out for tracks. Maybe some big kitty cat has been walking around. Or elephants. Be nice to see some elephants too. But if I oh, look, look what it is. Yeah. Oh no, oh. you see pointed at it. No, it's no, fine. It's it back, actually it's, it's better. Back. Have a look at there this really cool insect. Insects are my favorite <laughs> thing in the entire world. So sorry if you are all terrified of insects, you'll be learning why you should not be afraid of them. <laughs> now it's difficult to see but what we're actually looking at over here is a robber fly. Uh, so not like a normal house fly that you'll see buzzing about. Thank you for turning. Oh, see right on cue. View. Another one of the trained animals here on Wild Earth. Uh, it obviously just landed onto this dashboard because it, it wanted its moment of fame. So long elongated body, whereas house flies are a little bit more staunch and on the stubby side of things, but still those really big eyes. Uh, look at all the little hairs that it has on its legs and these are predatory creatures. They are ferocious, they like to catch all sorts of flying uh, insects and with the bouts of rain that we have had, there have been plenty of little flying things. In fact, the dragonflies as well have been uh, feasting. As I mentioned that, this robber fly was probably terrified at the word dragonfly <laughs> because it will be preyed on by dragonflies. And we've seen lots of that, so let's carry on. I'll see you. Thank you for pointing at that. I, I, I'd just like to let you know that Jordan said, who's directing, that if you point at something that I should... <laughs> slap my wrists. Slap your wrists, yeah. All right, well, you've only got to put up with me for one more drive. No, I'm fine with it. <laughs> but if the director tells me to do something, you know, unfortunately, no, I've got to do that's it. That's the big boss. Sorry, okay. Jordan, I apologize. Yeah. Jordan is the big boss. <laughs> that's the second little the piece of wildlife queen. we've had on the vehicle in our yeah, drives. we did. We have, indeed. We get a lot of it. Sometimes we, we get all sorts of things. Spiders. I oh, like yes. to collect spiders in the vehicle. That's my favorite thing. Unintentionally, of course. It's just my driving is so terrible that I end up going through trees quite regularly, like this, for an example. I do that. Luckily that one doesn't bite, because otherwise I end up with scratches too, and then I just end up with a bunch of bugs on my shoe. So, yeah, not really on my shoe, but it rhymed, so I couldn't resist. Some call me a young Dr. Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. No one calls me that, but I wish they did, though. I really do. Anyway, we're, we're still quite a distance away from the waterhole. You want Dr. Doolittle? Or? No, Dr. Doolittle, you can talk to animals. I uh, just like to rhyme. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, yes, of course. And have a good time. You do talk to animals too, but they don't do, really talk I back. I do. So. I have a conversation with, I think I told some of you about this. There's an Anyala bull, which is an antelope, beautiful looking creature, that uh, uh, frequent our camp. They, they just live there. There's a whole bunch of them. And there's one that's injured. And I think he must have run, it, it looked like swollen ankle, if you will. But um, the mass is sort of getting smaller and smaller and he's starting to put more and more uh, weight down on it. And I see him every morning. And of course I have to say, hello, Mr. Anyala, how's your leg? He kind of just looks at me and I think he's probably saying, take one more step closer to me and I'm gonna ram you over. And well, then I swiftly go, <gasps> kind of look. It's an African grey. No, no, I pointed. Yeah. You can, you, wait. You can do it in front of everyone. Can you reach? Oh, I got, I got told not to point. So it was for it, you, Jordan. Yeah, no. So I have to have it done back to me. Really hurt, Andrew. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Fun's not going to be sending Andrew hate mail. No, I'm just joking. I've got two brothers. That didn't hurt. Uh, it's gone now, Panda. It's lost in the trees. And I'm quite disappointed, actually, speaking of this big tree over here. That is a boar bean tree, a uh, part of the Scotia family. Where are your flowers? <laughs> this tree is supposed to be covered with flowers at the moment, and it's not. Anyway, so it's quite upsetting, because if we had had that tree in flower, we would have most certainly seen plenty of birds. We actually just would have sat under the shade of the bird green all day long. I used to do that at Pridelands. Maybe we need to ask Rex Rexon to visit Leopard Dam. And on the southern side of the dam, there was a bird green, but the elephants have been uh, 
pruning it, but that, that flowers quite nicely. I don't want to do it. I'm not pointing. No, Panda can point, see it. Point on the screen. Yeah. Point on the screen. Panda knows exactly where we're going. We're going to a bird, obviously, because Andrew's in the car. Andrew, is that a Cape starling or a greater blue-eared starling? I would say that is a Cape starling. It used to be called a Cape glossy starling. The reason I'm saying that is it doesn't have the black behind the eye, which is the distinctive feature of the the blue-eared starling. It should be called the black-eared starling, but they're nonetheless very beautiful. That iridescent plumage, that's the fancy name for that metallic blue. Maybe old Clalumba. It would be very nice uh, seeing that if Clalumba was around the dam. So I'm not too sure if it was a female or if it was a male, but I know I had female leopard tracks this morning, so I don't know. No idea. Any other information on that, Jordan? Nothing? I don't know if they can copy me.
are looking for our biggest fan this September. We want to know who you are. Do you know who you are? I know who I am. Answer every question weekly, consecutively, and you could be chosen as the Wild Earth Fan of the Month. And seeing as though it's the end of September, I need to let you know who this month's Fan of the Month is. Are you ready? Drum roll, please, everybody. Congratulations, Elise Roots. I'm not even, I can't even say your surname right. Roots. There that better. Perfect. Roots. 100%. I had to practice. I've been trying to practice. Congratulations well then, well then for Elise. answering the question. We're very proud of you. I don't know what language, sign language people communicate in. You know, some people do a nod up. I can I do it. I think this is universal. Well done. Thumbs up are good. I do a lot yeah. of thumbs up. High five. Anyways, so well done. That's awesome. We also have a bird surprise. I think it's just hard to see it. Um, I don't know how I'm going to get you a view without chasing them away. Let me go a little bit further forward. I'm going to yeah, just go down here. Up to the side. It's just there's a big branch that's blocking the one. But they would look like there were two. Okay, let me just go. I uh, will have a good view just now. There we go, Panda, you got it. Here we go. Sorry, we just, everyone, you know, you know the drill, leveling the camera, getting all those things sorted. Right now, it doesn't look like very much. Well, are you showing us some crows? What's going on here, Yeah, Taylor? it does look like there's two crows there, doesn't it? Just filled with black feathers. But what I will tell you is that it's hey. a, look at that reveal. It's a large bird. What is it? This is the Thunderbird, also known as the Southern Ground Hornbill. It's uh, got a, a Zulu name, Ingududu, which is uh, onomatopoeic. That means it mimics the sound that the bird makes. So it has this very deep hooting. It's woo, 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 woo. And what he's doing now is also just trying to keep cool. He's using his downtime in the shade to preen. Make sure his feathers are in top condition for later when he'll go out stalking for prey and they'll eat anything from scorpions to small snakes to even little rodents and whatever else they can pick up. They are definitely omnivores. Well, when they call to me, they tell they tell you what they're looking for. So it's do, 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 do. Where are the tortoises? Tortoises. <laughs> I Where haven't heard are that one actually. The torti tortoises, tortoises, yeah. Uh, it's told that once. And I have never forgotten, some of you might know Renius Mplongo. He is a legend in the safari industry who is one of the individuals that uh, helped uh, rehabilitate, not rehabilitate, that's the completely wrong word, habituate the leopards of the Sabi sand at Londolozi. And ever since he told me that, I'll never forget it. So thank you for that. But it is beautiful. There were two of them in here and there is a family of three that we see quite regularly. Uh, roaming these areas. They've actually got quite a big sort of home range, I suppose. Territory? No, territory mm. that they move around in. And they, they fiercely defend that territory. If there are other family groups coming into their territory and taking advantage of their resources, they will guard it very, very fiercely. And there's, they'll use those large bulls of theirs and those very strong feet and legs to devastating effect. So, another question for you, Andrew. Kimberly would like to know, are the male and female mm. feathers the same? The feathers are the same, but there are ways to tell the difference between males and females in this species. I think this is a male because the females on that little wattle or skin underneath the beak on, that, uh, on the throat area will have a little blue patch. But sometimes when they're younger you can't actually tell very well, but this is a fully adult bird as far as I can see. Uh, and therefore I'm saying this is a male. So it's not the feathers that are the difference, it's actually the colour of the skin underneath the throat. Very nice question, thank you. It is. I'm going to have to take a sip of water because I'm so parched <laughs> and my th throat is so dry. I'm really sorry. Normally I try and wait before we're off That's air, but okay. I think we're going to be live for a little bit. That's okay. I'll talk about um, some of the other fascinating aspects of this bird. Uh, they're cooperative breeders. 
So there's not many birds that are cooperative breeders, but these ones actually, they have, they raise little families, and then the one, the one generation will help to raise the next before they are forced out of the family group and start their own group. So the, the older brothers and sisters actually help to raise the younger brothers and sisters, you know, feeding them, looking after them, guarding them. So it's really nice that this is a family affair with the southern ground hornbills, and that's why you see them walking around in these groups often. Taylor mentioned there's a group of three that they often see. They can get up to eight or ten birds sometimes when they have had really good breeding seasons. So really cool that they all help out at home. One thing that I found fascinating, though, is that the uh, hornbill researchers don't know what happens to the females. So females will quite often leave and the males will stay. There's also something which they do, they, which they call kidnapping, where other family groups of hornbills will try and kidnap females <laughs> and keep them hostage and try and make them one of their own, which is, again, uh, I think that, you know, the word kidnapping is... We're anthropomorphizing hard. I don't know what you would actually <laughs> call that term, but I think it's quite comical. Um, but there's very little uh, research on what happens to the, the females once they do move off uh, from, from their natal group. Uh, you know, whether they are most likely predated on or do they travel far distances and join other flocks, who knows? Because as Andrew said, they're not always accepting of other family groups of hornbills. They can be quite uh, aggressive towards one another. And many years ago, some of you who have been long-time viewers of Wild Earth might remember the sighting with Tristan, and he had a, a southern ground hornbill killing another individual. Oh my word. Yeah, so it's, it's quite an intense thing. And with a beak like that, I know that uh, Paul yesterday was describing a heron's beak as like a spear. That's like a combination between a spear and a hammer. <laughs> Not going to quite, you know, stab things with the tip of its beak, but it's still pretty sharp. Mm. Powerful enough to crack through the top of a tortoise shell. Oh yeah, they are very strong birds. Another interesting fact about their breeding is that they will generally lay two eggs, but they'll lay one slightly after the other. And that second egg is basically an insurance egg. So if the first chick hatches and maybe there's a problem or it doesn't hatch, uh, then they will raise the second chick. But if both eggs hatch, they will actually just feed the first chick, which is generally a little bit older and a little bit stronger. And they will just leave the second chick to perish, which is quite sad. But it also gives us an opportunity for their conservation. The reason I say that is because there are several programs. Uh, we mentioned them yesterday. Lucy Kemp and the Mabula Ground Hornbill Trust and Taylor's friends in the APNR Hornbill Project as well that do good work taking when that first ha uh, egg is hatched uh, successfully they will actually go into the nest and harvest that second egg and then they will raise it very responsibly mind you we don't want them to imprint on human carers so they use puppets of ground hornbills and they actually raise them uh, that second chick and that way we get more birds released into the wild population um, so there's nothing genetically wrong with that second chick. It's literally just an insurance uh, egg. Uh, so really great that we can use that as a tool for their conservation because this is a species that is quite threatened. So Picasso is wondering what we think, what our opinions are. Uh, uh, they've suggested that this bird is about three years old. I think it's much older than that. Uh, it takes them quite a few years to reach their their complete adult plumage. And yeah, to me, to me this looks like much much older I, it's hot. I think it's really difficult to age i'm no expert in aging hornbills but i would say it's most likely above five years old i don't know older than that what do you think um i think it's definitely older than three but above you know once they've it's reached hard. adult plumage it's yeah. really difficult to say but this one doesn't have any of the vestiges of its juvenile plumage it's got full developed red beautifully deep red facial skin whereas the juveniles will have grayish tinge to them uh, they'll usually have slightly lighter feathers maybe lighter legs as well uh, but this one looks to be a fully developed um, adult male interesting very busy just uh, preening its uh, preening its feathers I I'm hoping as we sit here that it does pull out one of the feathers and it drops to the ground. Uh, I don't think I've ever had a close look at a southern ground hornbill feather. They're hard to come by. Um, so that would be really nice. Don't pull one out intentionally now, hornbill. <laughs> it's just, you know, if there's a feather that's not in great condition.
Linda Poli, you've said that you love Southern Ground Hornbills and this is one of the first birds that you ever saw on Safari Live, Wild Earth. Oh, wow. That's pretty special because it's not like we get to see them every single day. You obviously tuned in uh, on a good show, which is awesome. I don't know where the other one has gone. I think it might have dropped down into the dry riverbed that's uh, below. But for birds like this with a very large wingspan, it's difficult for them to sit in trees and find shade. So this is the jackalberry that we typically like to sit under uh, that will keep us nice and cool, but with the big branches that extend off to the left and to the right uh, and with the gaps between the foliage, it's perfect. It's truly perfect for these birds and it'll be nice and cool up there. In fact, I might not climb this tree, but I might have to go up another one. And you. You can also come up the tree if you like, Andrew. <laughs> BirdLife South Africa is translating birding facts into the country's 12 official languages. Download the Birda app today. For every 12 birds logged by a South African citizen, Birda will make a donation towards this critical project. Alternatively, visit the BirdLife website to make a direct donation. Go wild, go birding with Wild Earth. All right, so we are still trying to follow up on uh, that leopard that was seen around yeah, at Gary Dam. So I'm not too sure exactly where. Um, I haven't really seen any tracks where we are now. So maybe, oh uh, yeah, come here, there's tracks coming here. There's tracks. Come here, came this side. All right. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm just going to take a look. We are at the inflow of the dam. Looks like the tracks went up. Yeah. Hold on. Play right. Just hold on. Alright, we're just at the inflow. Just double checking on all little nooks and crannies. Yeah, it's amazing on this the heat of the day that uh, this female will be walking around. But, you know, I'm trying to not. Uh, Trying to look at every little shady spot here. So I'm not too sure, maybe came there, had a drink, and could have headed up coming up to this side. So it actually came from Galago Pan, not heading towards Galago Pan. So Galago Pan is just behind us. Let's take 
a look. Mm. Right, I'm just going to go quickly a little bit of the spike thorn here. Just want to see. Watch out there, Paul. Watch your mm. side. Debbie, <laughs> the cat will make my week. I'll make my two weeks. And especially a leopard. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I will be very happy. Very happy. We actually had a fish eagle here just now, but unfortunately the fish eagle decided to uh, take off. So um, I'm just going to take a look. Uh, let's see if we can maybe try and follow up here very soon. Mm. And some of the little areas is quite thick here. Oh, yeah. Oh, we've got a fish eagle. Here it is. Yeah, it's right on top of it. And beautiful African fish eagle. Paul, what do That's, you think about this bird? It's a very nice bird, eh? And uh, we call it Sogodi uh, Sarikapi. Sogodi Sarikapi. Okay. Yes. A fishing eagle. Fishing eagle. Yes. Okay. Mm. Hmm. Very nice to have that. Mm. Oh, it's coming back. It might. No. Mm. But it's, it's not a true eagle because it doesn't have leggings. It doesn't have leggings. Yes, it doesn't have leggings. You're sure about that? I'm, I'm yes. sure fish eagles got leggings, Paul. Let's just it take doesn't. a look at it. Okay. I will just double check. Mm, just double check. Mm. It's, it's skin. Yeah, it's, it's got leggings, eh? African fish eagles got leggings. No, it doesn't extend. Not all the way down. Okay. Yes, not all the way. All the way down. Yes, okay. Yes. All right. Mm. Hmm. Interesting. So a fish mm. eagle is not an eagle, a tree eagle. All right. All right. Well, we've got some nice hippos here. Of course, with all the oxpeckers, nice to always to see the oxpeckers around. I love them. I can see these hippos are really sticking to the water. It is a scorch of a day, so I think they're making sure that their skin is kept nice and uh, wet. I don't want to expose those sensitive epidermis too much to the sun because it will start drying up and start being a bit of a problem to them so they need to keep it. oh yeah. there goes a lizard buzzard no it, uh, it was small it was small mm, it was small yeah it was uh, very small in that one uh. one of the smallest acipita yeah. uh, i will go for a little sparrow hawk a little sparrow hawk yes. okay so we just saw a little hawk uh, flying by uh, yeah. and uh uh, Paul thinks it was a little sparrowhawk. Mm. Okay, interesting. Uh, especially sometimes the water holes do get busy, you know, with the birds mm. as well, especially getting hot and all that. They're also coming down for their little drinks and, you know, it's, uh, it's just so nice to sit back here and watch. Mm. You can see the fish eagle, African fish eagle still flying around. But oh, beautiful call. The real, like the sound of Africa to me. Mm. It is. Can you make the call, Paul? Yeah, well, that is fantastic. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant display of a f African fish eagle. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to continue searching for this uh, leopard. Let's head over to Rexon as he wants to say good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome in a beautiful, a hot afternoon here at Pradland. Echo Training Safari Live. We are starting our show here at the uh, Roku Ridge. We are heading, aiming towards the Leopard Dam. Maybe it might be a joy there. From myself, Rexon, and BK behind the camera, we are hop hoping for a good uh, wildlife activity around this dam. It's extreme hot uh, for the afternoon. I believe that if we stay if we have an um, an opportunity for our coverage at the water hall today we might able to see a leopard or lion definitely there's no doubt it's very hot here it's 
very very hot let's head down towards the leopard dam and see what might be thank you the our, our communication is breaking down i missed the name yes i'm welcome in pride land this is one of the province in south africa it's very hot from here up to the north i have no doubt even if you go further more north 40 kilometers from here it is extremely very hot but it helps quite a lot i mean in a hot weather like today animals they come quite vigorously uh, around the water source let's see who is in front of us as we are talking about uh, the water source animal going down to the water source look what we have found here Wow, a big giant here, yeah. a male elephant is aiming towards the dam. If I analyze very well, it looks like he's been at the waterhole less than two hours. If you look at the mud on the body system and being kicked there, you can tell that it's a fresh sort of um, mud wallus, but she's turning back to the water, which means uh, today it's so much hotter. Remember, each and every time, all the wild animals out here in nature, more especially from all these big animals. Remember, where they can change the behavior of a species. Sometimes they stress quite a lot. If it's too hot like this, they change even the behavior. They're becoming very aggressive, of course, because they're stressing a lot due in the body system. Overheating, it, care, it, it really causes species to change behavior and they become more aggressive. Same as in, in, in dry season, if there's no much water and much grass, these animals' behavior is changing. Let me tell you that if we head down towards the water, if the buffalo are not there, we'll be lucky because it's too hot. It's very extreme hot. They might be going to another water source close by around the era. But this is a perfect time. Let's go there and have a look. Maybe we might be lucky to see it. It's hot here. You cannot sustain to be in uh, open. It's really, I'm feeling my head a lot more hotter. How sad. You know, these animals are amazing. We're leaving. We are heading towards the water source. I believe there we might see even more elephant and the other species. As I said, it's a good day for all species going down to the water. During our morning safari, there was a lot of uh, a buffalo head. Let's see, maybe we are early to find the buffalo, but they will come. Of course, while we're heading down towards the water source and go and check the area what might be around, let me take you to Taylor. Ah, oh, Rickson, glad you could have us uh, or join us this afternoon. We have stumbled across, it, I know it looks like one rhino with two heads, but there's actually two individual rhinos and a wallow. I was quite lucky we just bumped into them as they were casually plodding along and I thought they were going to walk to a water hole but instead they found themselves a comfy wallow to rest in. There was actually a bit of argumenting going on between these two chunky unicorns as there's not much space in that wallow. They couldn't have chosen a, a worse one. Actually, just up the road from where we are right now, there, uh, not too far, a couple of hundred meters, there's a much better area that would have been more suited to two individuals. Uh, but it is two rhinos that we've been seeing quite regularly. The old rhino cow that was sadly caught in a fire, and then the other female that she's been associating with uh, over the last couple of weeks. So it's nice to see that they are still keeping one another company. Just with their heads out though, they try to roll around a little bit, but rhinos are not good at rolling. <laughs> you can see also just ears just twitching, eyes are closing. 
good time to have a siesta. They were pretty much just trying to graze on what little grass is left. But if there wasn't much food around, then what's the next best thing to do? Sleep and keep cool. But a very different way to cool themselves down in comparison to what the birds do. Lorna's asked which other animals might join these rhinos for a mud wallow. Well, Lorna, <laughs> potentially an ant could fit in between the two because there's that <laughs> little space. Um, there were some red-billed oxpeckers that were hopping around, but they've moved off. I don't think that they appreciate also sitting in the sun today. I think they wanted a bit of shelter. Then who knows, there might be an unsuspecting terrapin stuck between those two rhinos at the moment. Uh, Although I would have just tried to kind of get out of there if I, I could have. But right now there's no space. If it was a big enough area uh, with many more wallows, you could potentially have warthogs wandering in. Uh, elephants might come and toss mud on themselves. You, you've just seen an elephant with a rexin that was uh, covered in mud. Uh, but in a space like this, the rhinos are really going to hold their ground. And I honestly don't think anyone else is going to be brave enough to come and bother them. There's one of the ox peckers. Actually, there's this, that ox pecker was probably stuck underneath that rhino, <laughs> involuntarily holding its breath. I've never heard how long an ox pecker can hold its breath underwater, but uh, here we go. No, I'm just teasing, of course, it was sitting on the other side. Now on its head. The ox peckers were getting right down and deep into those rhino's ears as well. Obviously, it's an area where ticks might crawl into the little gaps there, but also they're quite big fans of earwax. Mm. Those of you who have watched Shrek will will know what I mean. I've got plenty. Uh, there we go. <laughs> I don't, they must come check you out. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they'll be removing little ticks and pests and things from the skin, but they're also doing that open mouth gaping and gula fluttering, as uh, Taylor said earlier, just to try and keep cool. So there's a question from Lara who wants to know, do red-billed oxpeckers and yellow-billed oxpeckers have the same diet? Yes, uh, they do, but they have different hosts. So they will eat pretty much anything. These, these birds are not, well, they, they're generalists as we say. They will eat little parasites and that, and that's usually what you'll find in the textbooks about the relationships with, with big mammals, but they will also take little pieces of dead skin and when animals have wounds they actually have a habit of keeping them open because they like to uh, drink on the blood it's very iron rich and has other nutrients that they they really enjoy it's obviously a source of liquid so they can be quite an irritant as well as a cleaning service for these big mammals the yellow billed ox pickers will be on your buffalo for instance occasionally giraffe but they don't really tolerate them that well uh, rhinos possibly but uh, generally it's the animals with the thicker skin because they have stronger claws than the red-billed ox pickers which are smaller finer birds and uh, yeah they won't put up with them as well How much do you know about birds? To conclude our birding challenge, we are hosting a fireside chat. Join us as we celebrate our feathery friends whose chirps liven up our days. Come along for interesting discussions with our special guests from BirdLife South Africa and find out more about their big birding projects on the horizon. Spread your wings and soar with Wild Earth.
It is beautiful, of course. When it comes to heat, it's one of the uh, thing, or uh, one of the weather that, uh, of course, it falls all these dark gray, black looking color species to be around water. Look at the other species that are dark, even uh, Ron. Some of them they need to be in the, at the water hole in the thicket. In the thicket, use the uh, canopy of trees to cool down the body system. We start using these big trees around in the area as the elephants, some of them you can see, we have seen the buffalo earlier on, they give protection of the sun. Of course, it, it's, uh, it's a lot of uh, thing that can happen if they be really all the time in the sun, more especially um, elephant. You know that uh, the body system get heat and that it's more important because they lose quite a lot of energy from the heat so they have to cool down the body system they have to gain um, a little bit of uh, momentum to move around in the area There's no way that the elephant can really spend their life away from the water source. You can see these elephants, they keep coming back into the water source again. This kind of extreme weather, it means weather is going to change maybe in the afternoon. Some of the time, if it's very hot in the area, it tells that uh, it might rain very soon. It encourages the rains, weather to come around in the area. If you listen quite carefully while also I'm speaking, you can hear the crickets. That's, that's, that's. That tells you, you cannot walk in the course of a day as a human being. You can dehydrate and die. It, it's very hot here. It's very extreme. You can tell even from the elephant. They're concentrating one of the tree that pushed by the elephant called Amarula. What they're doing there will have a time sometimes to drive past. They're debugging that to the whole tree from the twig up to the stem and everything such amazing it's something that is special we remember we one day i was really getting information that uh, some of the trees in the body system with the minerals that they hold it able to give um, uh, calcium into the body system of the elephant there's reason you find particular bushes are getting hammered by elephant because they get certain minerals that they want in the body system that helps also sometimes for them even for digestion system in their stomach sac. It's so much important to find them uh, pushing, debarking certain tree as we can see. When talking about the buffalo and the female mating, I just get there. We in the age of our signal range. Sometimes it's difficult even to to get most of the words in full. But he's asking about how actually the buffalo get the female to mate. In this regard, these are called the bachelor boys. They are be they will be in the area until the female gets into the location where they might be and join the female because they're always taking care of themselves and building up the body system. They're not walking far. They're not losing quite a lot of energy in the body system. They can able to rebuild their body and make stronger and healthy. Remember survival of the fittest out in the bush. They become fitter than the one that walks 40 kilometers a day. So once they get into the head or join of the head around the water source, they take an opportunity to be a number one male that can mate because they carry a very healthy gene in the body system that they don't lose quite a lot by walking or fighting with the lions. They just take care of themselves. They move less than one kilometer every day and back into the water source. So whatever they eat is not going to be wasted in the energy of walking and running. All the time it will be physical healthy benefits for this species in order to be a first preference when it comes to female and mating. It's now actually why they're doing this. It also be love by the female. You know, wildlife are not like us. Survival of the fittest. If a strong male coming there and shows the muscles, females are a lot more happy. Uh, I was just saying uh, this morning 
talking about general elephant, elephants and baboons and other species, more special primates, how actually they choose the partner of mating or preference of individual males is the one that look intimidating even from the leopard and from the lions. If a male baboon is healthy, stronger, physical, have that good genetic pool, it is respected by the most of the species. Remember, out in a bush, your physical health, it tells the story to the other side of the predators. If you are strong, healthy, predators that can't touch you because they know that you are healthy, you got to fight, they're going to lose sometimes and get hurt. All the time they think about what's going to happen in future if I get hurt. Like lions, in most cases, it's end of the life. Leopard is the same because if you don't keep up with the same, are proud of your lion and you leg behind, there's hyenas, there's a group of buffalo that if they come across with any weak animals, they're going to kill it. That's the reason if you are intimidating, you always love by a majority of the female because you carry a healthy gene pool. Male lion, it will be seen by the mane, which have a very big mane and dark looking, shining. That means he's stronger and intimidating for anyone that might be engaging that particular lions. So it's how actually we respect it out in nature. Physical healthy, it's more demand. That's the reason these buffalo are doing that. Now they're trying to be physical healthy and look by the, the majority of the female and be, get more excited and accept them. So they're investing uh, at the moment, being alone. It's a risk if you see, but uh, it works. Indeed, you look at uh, the uh, elephant. Uh, also a very good sign that uh, we can elaborate about the heat around an area. The, uh, Elephant now is just presenting everything in front of you that uh, it's a hot day. That's the reason he's doing that, wallowing. First, you can see he's just splashing all the mud behind the ears, the head, where most of the time blood circulation first it will be going and where it's going to be sense that it's too hot is through the brain. So you stimulate that first before your body, then your body will cool down very easily. Brenda, apology, yeah, maybe you had that, uh, 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 yeah, we, we're having a little bit of a, a break up on the signal range. Never worry about that, we were able to touch everything about the elephant, yes, look like Brenda, you're celebrating about the elephant, you'll never ever get tired seeing them. It's a nice animal, I love animal, elephant. It's one of the species that I understand the most than anything else. Even myself, due to the heat, where the vehicle is, is where we think the signal is better. I will be jumping off and able to really present uh, the story of a life here at this water hole because it's unbelievable. What I'm going to do here is to uh, present what I see by my naked eyes of uh, elephant and this buffalo, what is happening here. It's such amazing and beautiful. If you look at that elephant, you see what he's doing on the feet. It looks like he's stumbling on something there or stampeding on something. That is mud. Is how actually they use their feet to stay the mud in order to uh, really use the mud to be a layer on their skin and able to carry that uh, sand or mud in the skin. Wherever they move in the area, it will be a lot more easy for them for sand not to penetrate direct into the skin than it makes the uh, blood get warm and hot easily. That has to regularly go back to the water. So that's the reason you find that elephant doing that. Such an amazing thing to see and it works quite a lot. It's like us putting a sun lotion. Of course, if it's too hot, you apply sun lotion, you feel like you are a lot more better and a little bit of a breeze in your skin. Exactly the same what's going on here. The elephant is such amazing species and they use that quite a lot to cool down the body system. At the other side, they can able to really suffocate all the ticks that might be parasiting on the skin itself that they can be free from the ticks. We all know that. Ticks sometimes can carry disease. If you don't take uh, or don't look after yourself, what's going to happen? You'll have ticks that uh, do have disease and end that parasiting on the skin and it can be easily passed on the 
a disease that might be the ticks carrying. So all the time, this is how actually elephant taking care of themselves, is to wallow on the mud. Or sometimes swimming, it's quite a lot of things that are involved life of different species inside water that helps quite a lot having a, a symbiotic relationship with these animals coming down, allow them to groom them, take off the skis as far as terraping, fish, Welcome to Destination Safari. This evening, steeped in history, we are going to be exploring Leonbosch Country House and Shearer's Lodge. Hello, my name is Maurice. I am from Perth in Western Australia. Hello, I'm Stéphane. As you can hear, I am French and I'm doing the 35 days uh, online course. I started watching Wild Earth during COVID. I decided that I wanted to study more. And in order to do that, I saw that Eco Training Pridelands um, was doing courses and I decided to do the eight week online a theory course at the end of last year. So the 35 days course, it basically starts with the theory online, uh, three sessions a week, very enjoyable. We went really, really deep into it, uh, very holistic as well. I uh, really enjoyed it. It goes from insects to stars to obviously your mammals and your birds. I liked the, the two components. Uh, it just got me really well prepared before I got here. Despite my accents and my misunderstandings, Everyone has been very helpful and uh, comprehensive to help me to understand everything. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting out on your journey towards becoming a conservationist, our digital courses offer a flexible and accessible way to deepen your knowledge and understanding of the natural world. So why wait? Sign up for an eco-training digital course today. Start your journey towards a more sustainable and connected future today. just spotted something in this crevice of this tree. Uh, it uh, was an obthorn and the bark has actually started peeling away. Where are my binoculars? I just want to have a quick look because as we drove past, just something caught my eye. It's probably 
a reptile of some sort. I think I can actually see it. I think. Uh, so, Panda, let me point to it. Panda, just check here. Just want to see if I, how low I am. I can't see it. Okay, where's this block? Okay, go down a little bit from there. It's sort of in in the in between the bark, not on the left, on the right hand side. There's that gap. So it is a it's I don't know if it is a gecko or a lizard of some sort or a skink, but I can see it. It's basically I'm just trying to see nicely. I don't know if we're going to be able to see it. So, oof, it's so dark in there. But it is in there and I can see it looking back at me. Let's just spend a few, maybe, maybe, maybe just a minute or so, maybe it'll come back out for the sun. Jordan has just said to me, it's amazing how we spot these things while we're moving. Well, oh, there it just runs out. Uh, well, the fact that those creatures move too, um, is really helpful. But this is a perfect home for lots of animals to hide in. I'm pretty sure there were nesting bush babies somewhere along this road in one of the hollows of these trees. Because they're dead, they're not going to come alive, unfortunately, ever again in their life. So uh, even though we might see no purpose uh, in them, lots of other animals will will be quite happy with this. We must just start keeping an eye, we'll start to uh, come sitting around here in the crepuscular period and maybe you'll see little bush babies pop up because there were quite a few places where we would wait. We could see them wake up. I'm surprised this winter, I, haven't, I feel like I haven't seen that many bush babies, but where I live in the Hoodsprade Wildlife Estate, we see them plenty bounding from tree to tree. I'm just checking because it is so nice and warm up on all these trees. Maybe we will find something. What I'm also going to have to do before I come back, I saw there were these amazing, really big scorpion torches. So UV light torches, but with lots and lots of lots of little LED lights rather than the smaller ones. And I think it's going to cost a decent light. So I'm going to be purchasing one of those so that I can drive like this and then shine it on all the all the trees and uh, hopefully we'll be able to find some more scorpions but that's something that we're going to be looking for this evening when the sun drops behind the horizon as hopefully we'll have as much luck oh i don't know if they're going to stay there's no of course they're not never mind don't even worry there's little fire finches flying about but they don't ever stop Okie dokie. Sorry everybody, my mic cable keeps deciding it wants to crawl over my shoulder for some bizarre reason and it's very uncomfortable in that position. Oh look everyone, Impala! Andrew's looking at me, what? Laugh, you can laugh. Be disappointed. I just hadn't seen them yet, actually. You, you haven't. I oh, there it is. love impala, and no, I sit with them all the time. Completely underrated animals. They're extremely beautiful, but there's so many of them, so we just don't look at them. But that's actually <laughs> Jordan actually has actually thing. said it's your favourite mammal. mammal. Um, How did she know? You, you just you're telekinetic. They're going to probably run away from us. I'm so sorry, girls, that I parked on top of you. As there were more of them. Just two females. I'm sure there will be more individuals, uh, maybe off to the right or off to the left, just further into the, the vegetation. We probably won't stay with them for that long because as much as we love impala, impala that you can only see their ears twitching is um, <laughs> not wonderful and we can most, so bless you, most certainly get a better view of, uh, of some impala. So we'll continue. I wonder where Cedric is at the moment. I think he said he was checking kind of to the west, a little bit to the north. I just don't know where to go yet. Mm, almost game drive time for Chitwa. Whoop. 
boop, boop, boop. That's my terrible zebra call, which we have again. Everybody get away from the trees. Come out into the open, actually. We might get a better view of the zebra around the corner, so let's try that. There's so many animals at Treehouse Dam, and they were all drinking, but then they disappeared quickly. There's one... No, 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 no. We're not doing this today, please. Into the gap. Oh. So there is a zebra that's running away from us basically. I don't know why all the animals have an issue with me today except the rhinos and the southern ground hornbill. Yeah, we're talking about you zebra. I hope <laughs> the flies bite you even more for disappearing behind that tree. It's not very nice when they do that. There's also some more impala. Nice collection. Uh, I'm curious. So. Andrew and I hit a very intense gym session today. <laughs> Andrew almost passed out, and then we went for a quick little leg stretch walk onto the open plains behind uh, behind camp, which we call quarantine. And there was zebra, there were impala, there was everything, and it's not too far away. And they did obviously move away from us a little bit, but they definitely didn't run to the far east which is what they've done so i don't know what crossed the open plains since we've mm. been there because there's not real any reason no well, there's no real reason sorry me speak english um for them to have moved such a great distance when they had water much closer but we're just going to do a little bit more investigating and hopefully we'll have the answers Attention all Wild Earth fans, it's that time of the year when the sun rises earlier and sets later and Wild Earth is shifting showtimes. From October, our daily sunrise safari is moving an hour earlier, live at the waterhole is moving an hour later and our daily sunset safari is moving half an hour later. Don't miss a moment, Wild Earth, it's in your nature. There is, of course, if, if, if you look at all species that are dark, even if going down to the water, if it's very hot, most of the time you can see that uh, the water that uh, they might be using is very easy to evaporate because the skin itself, it doesn't uh, really reflect it, uh, absorb quite a lot of the heat. That's the reason elephant will be 
coming down to the water quite often because they're very easy to lose the water that they use in their skin that uh, really cooling down themselves as you can see this boy here is just putting water in the skin if it's too hot it's easy for that water to evaporate very easy in the body system and they have to come back again and able to spray themselves oh we have the, another giant coming behind us we cannot able to form behind us but he's gonna be part of the vehicle is trying to inqu in inquire ourselves look at the vehicle in a high attitude the head is raising up and So we have come now towards uh, Biffelzook Dam area. Um, apparently, I had a, 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 an update from one of the, the staff members around it. They said they saw a male lion around the dam area. So now we are trying to see if we can locate this male lion. I'm not too sure which male lion and how big is this male lion and how many are there. No idea. But I just said male a lion. So. I think we are just busy doing a little bit of a scratch around here at the dam area just to see if this lion is not lying somewhere inside this grass and uh, well, we took a look at all the corners so far and nothing. Uh, it must be here somewhere so we will continue searching around this side just to see if we can find this uh, tawny cat for the afternoon which would be fantastic. I would be very, very happy. Especially to see which male lion it is. A lion, so I'm not, as I say, I'm not too sure. Oh, let's get up here. Not the easiest of roads, this one. This one is quite the bumpy road. Hazy bee, no, hazy bee, the lions all are leopards, they don't wallow. They don't go and wallow to get cool down. They'll just pant. Go lie in the shade somewhere and pant. So, yeah, they're not, uh, lions and leopards, they're not really fond of water. You know, water and of course mud, less so. You know, they're like cats, so they want to stay clean. So. Well, you know what, if I was an animal today here yeah, in the bush, I would go and wallow. Oh yes, indeed. I will go and jump into, into the water or into the mud somewhere. But unfortunately, I'm not, uh, not going to get myself uh, all muddied up. I'll stay like this for now. All right, let's take a look here. I'm not too sure where it is. The guy said on this side of the dam, we went that side of the dam, and there's nothing on that side of the dam. Oh, well, maybe the link road to the dam. Nothing on this side, yeah. We'll just go, we're gonna go back to the dam again. And just stop there for a little bit and uh, just just look around. That. Like, wow, what a day. It's been so hot. Well, it was nice. At least we got the fish eagle there, Paul. It was, that was very nice. Mm. Did you, you enjoy the fish eagle, Paul? Yes, nice, I eh? did, 100%. It was fantastic. The, the adult one. Mm. It's such a beautiful, it's such a very thick wingspan on those fish eagles. I mean, mm. you can imagine swooping down. A, a and fish. to pick up the fish and then fish. of course flying up. Oh, we've got, what is that? Kudu in front of us. Of course, we're just going to try and stop somewhere in. Uh, right there, hat. Kind of. All right, there's a for Kudu. Oh. I'm going to run across the road. 
few kudus. Beautiful, there's a young male, young bull at the back end there. See the lot of those horns are coming through, and of course the female. And beautiful antelope. That's tall, not in bedi. Mm. Yeah, we also yeah we call it shabalala or, or shabalala or nongo or nongo. Mm. Shabalala nongo. All right, well we're going to continue searching for this male line around Biffelzook. Head over to Rexon as he's still got those beautiful elephants. Great tough uh, from Cedric searching a male line at Befesuk Dam, one of the dam that I know that uh, elephant life to visit in the course of a hot day. We are here at Prideland Echo Training a Leopard Dam. We have this uh, a male elephant at a stage which have come from the northern side of the property. In most cases, you find that uh, elephants don't like, they're not fond of swimming, well, especially if, if an elephant have reached a sexual maturity between 35, 40 years, you tend to see they don't waste that time. What they do, they'll use mud, even spraying themselves the ears, to cool down the body system, or even uh, pouring themselves of mud in the body system itself and cool down and just move on all the time. The reason behind that, these are very experienced elephants. Uh, they select the areas where they move in most cases when they do grazing. It's not everywhere that they can just move and find food. They prefer very thick area. All the time this cover, this shadow, and they concentrate themselves on those area. He looks like he is more interested from the uh, other side of the bank of this um, inflow that um, I really feed this uh, leopard dam. There is a breeding herd of elephant, or it could be mouths, I'm not sure, because there were lots of elephant that were active in this waterhole. They're just hammering one of the um, Amarula trees, debucking. As I said earlier on, remember these animals, sometimes they certain minerals that they like to gain on certain trees that are in the area. It's unbelievable to see like that kind of a behavior. And elephant, of course, they can communicate even if there's certain thing as far as food wise, they would try as much as they can in order to really tell the other members or individual members that in the area and join in that particular sort of a plan that they need to do. I've seen quite a lot in the surrounding of the lodge where sometimes a matriarch will come and seek for a specific plant that uh, he really likes the most that might be really introduce the rest of the head more especially if he does have youngster that need to be introduced into a certain plant that could be a medicine you tend to see a metric of more than five ten youngster and introduce the certain plant Try to turn it's difficult to find animal around water at night. At night, at night, yes, you find a night species as far as leopard and lions because of the one that uh, likes to come down to the water, like uh, rattle, that's honey beige. You tend to see them coming down to the water. I've seen again uh, gray dacres, they like to come down at night <clears throat> for the water system or water source. They're so amazing species, of course. They rely on the sense of a smell and the eyesight, such amazing. But lions and leopard, of course, they move at night. You tend to find them. And the elephant, they don't have specific time because migrating from one area to another is depend what time you arrive at the water source. Some of the elephants can arrive at night at the water source because they travel from far distances to get water. But in this regard, here we have water source not far from the area. One is there by Nlovi Dam, one is there by HQ. I'm not, for, I'm not sure how far is east, but in the area we find that there's not many water holes as we can count at the area now where we are. They tend to travel such distances uh, from one water source to another, and it depends what time you arrive at the water source. You can find elephant at night and they can drink water. Even buffalo at night you can find it depends how much you have traveled to get in a water source of course. But mainly these are the species, we call them danal species and we have nocturnal species. Nocturnal species 
are the species that uh, feel more comfortable to move at night, to do everything that they can at night, hunting, water source, and patrolling the area at night. The general species, you tend to see species that are playing their movement in the course of a day from one water source up to hunting and patrolling the area to retrieve boundaries. They do in a, a daily a light. So those animals, you tend to see them in the course of a day, most around the water source. Those are uh, night species. You see them in the night. It's how it works uh, around you with all different wild, wildlife that are in the area. This is my experience that I've seen with these animals in most cases. You know that I love the honey badger because the honey badger is one of the species he, he, they can choose, honey badger, they can choose what time they need to go around in the water source. It's one of the species that are very aggressive. They challenge everything out here. If they want to come at night, they do, but especially there are nocturnal species, they can ever angle active at night. From here, Leopard Dam, uh, yeah, Echo Training Safari Life, will be linking to Cedric. Uh, he managed to find a male lion in Juma. Yay! Confetti, balloons, trumpets, everything is going off here at Buffalzook Dam. Why? Because we have located on this male lion. I tell you, I am so happy. How nice is this? I'm not too sure which male lion this is. It's not the S8, it's a much younger one. You can see the mane is not as big on top. So I'm not too sure which male is this. Uh, as I said, he hasn't picked his head up yet. Is it, is it, is it one of the black damn males? No idea, because I know that did come into Juma last night. And uh, then they went into Torchwood apparently, and then there's one, yeah, one of the lions is here. So is this a, one of the S8, I mean, black dam males? We shall see. But yeah, very nice, of course, lying here on the northern side of Biffleswick Dam. So this is the dam that's really in the northeastern corner of uh, Juma. And as you can see, he is doing what lions do pretty much best, and especially on a very hot day like this now. He is uh, taking a good old nap, good snooze and we will not move from this area till the end of show. So we'll get hopefully get some more action out of this male line. But for now, as you can see, he's just uh, resting. Uh, if he is part of the, if he's uh, part of the coalition, the Black Dam Male Coalition, then of course it's two males, it's two brothers. And they were together yesterday. So I'm gonna get my binocs out here just to check the ear. I know the one on the right. Here he's got a little bit of that fur that's missing on top there. <laughs> Michelle S, yes. <laughs> I, I, I tell you, I can't believe I'm I'm so excited to see a lion. I am. I'm really am because it's uh, yeah. I've been very dry and far and few between with lions and leopards. So yeah. Great, great stuff. But he hasn't eaten much. You can see he's still a very flat belly. So uh, he is a hungry lion. Good condition. There's nothing wrong with his condition. It looks like his good so condition is quite good. So not too much of an issue with that. I think he just needs a good old meal. Well, so I don't think he's a very old male. Like the S8 male, um, we're looking at maybe like Mohawk. Yeah, Cataday, grumpy old man, Cataday. Saturday, Cataday, finally. We can start celebrating Cataday. Hey, Paul, what do you think yes, about this yes. uh, beautiful male lion? It's so nice, and I'm also so very happy since. Yes. Uh, uh, Thursday, looking for cats. Yes, and, uh, this is the first one, you know. Yes, so it's <laughs> so good. I am so very excited. excited. Yeah, yeah. I'm very excited. <laughs> oh yes, definitely, okay. Paul. Mm. I know it's not a bird, but it's all right. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's a stunning you know, cat. It's nice to see a cat, you know. Mm. Mm. Especially, not especially in the wild like this, not in the captivity. So it's so nice to see it in the wild. 
And when last have you seen a, a big male lion? You know, also in, in Chengui, it's in 2012. Oh, wow. Yes, two males, they were feeding, big ones, they were yeah. feeding on the uh, buffalo. Oh, yes? Yes. Mm. So since 2012, so that is 11 since. years ago, <laughs> and you last seen a male lion, yes. a wild male lion. Well, that is fantastic mm. that mm. we can at least show you this magnificent cat. Mm. But all by himself for now. But as you know, if it's uh, if he's got brothers or even half brothers, they'll usually uh, end up as a coalition. And when I'm talking about a coalition, it means like uh, it's uh, brothers in arms like a little bit of an army, and of course they can set up a territory all together, a nice, uh, huge territory, and in those territories you'll get uh, two or three female pride territories in the male's territory. But being by yourself, look, I've seen uh, single males roaming around many a time, um, and they can set up a territory, but they cannot have more than two, three female prides then, because they're pretty much by themselves. Um, but yeah, if you've got a brother that's helping you, We've got two brothers or three or four brothers, well, then you know, you've got a better chance on really protecting that area. World Animal Day is here, and Wild Earth is rallying for a battle of the ages. One naturalist reigns victorious, and the time for redemption has arrived. It's Safari Bingo. Catch the chaos and contention as our naturalists compete to spot the most animals. Join us on our sunset safaris and spot the next sovereign of the safari. Wild Earth, we are Safari. As you can see, Paul is getting really involved here. He's got his binocs out. He's looking at this line very closely, kind of uh, just uh, observing all the interesting little parts of the line, the mane, the paws, the tail. <coughs> all right, so. Uh, no, Kimberly Lopez, you say maybe it could be one of the young Talamati boys. Of course, it's two brothers. The one is very light, and then, of course, this one, the darker one. So, it could be very possible. Oh, there you go. There you go. Now we can see it. He's got his lips. He's got a scar on his lip. Now we can really see nicely. 
Hello. Oh, look at that. Ah, oh, it could be. But look at that mane. Isn't he beautiful? Wow. Of course, picking up on a scent of something. And that wind is just blowing through the mane. Just like Brad Pitt. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. Pete Smith. But isn't that beautiful? Hey, but now you can see he hasn't got that real full mane yet. It's still pretty much uh, growing into into the mane and all that. So sooner or later, give it another. Few more years, but is it sure it is him? Because look at those te teeth are very blunt. Uh, that's not a young male. No, this is not a young male. This is not a young male. You can see how blunt those teeth are. No. Oh my goodness, you must be joking. Now I feel bad. It's Mohawk. <laughs> no wonder I wanted to say it's old male. Oh my goodness. No Mohawk. Uh, he's on a mission now. Yeah, but he's lost a lot of mane, eh? Yeah, uh, well, he's getting to that age now. I mean, what, 10, 11 years old? I mean, they were born in 2013. So pretty much, pretty much uh, 10 years old, 11 years old. Mohawk. Yeah, my goodness gracious. Hey, uh, it's, it's, it's a very well-known male, the side pole. Okay, very well-known. Okay. He used to be, uh, well, he's still a, a dominant male in some of the areas, yeah, but he is going north now. But uh, he used to have two brothers as well, okay. but the two brothers passed away. All right. Yeah, so there used to be three. The Voca males, they used to known as the Voca males. Okay. All right, let's That's turn around. All right, while we're going to try and reposition here, yeah, let's head over to Pridelands. Lovely, thank you from Cedric Prideland. We are really specializing with the elephant. It's unbelievable. We we had elephant that comes and goes. As this one leaving, I can see there's more elephant coming back into the water source. There will be a lot more elephant today in this area. And we're going to stay here and see if we might count how many elephant that we have seen here. Look at the youngster. I love that. You know, in most cases, is how actually they learn. All what they're doing there, they all the learning from practically on the experience, how actually you walk in a very muddy area. Sometimes during the dry season, where animals are losing condition, <laughs> simulating as it's stuck, you can see that it's enjoying. I mean, he loves the most what he's doing there, but that is, all about playing but simulating a very serious uh, sort of um, uh, activity as stacking on the mud. So during the dry season where animals are losing, losing condition, you tend to see even elephant, baby elephant strike quite a lot um, I mean, in a very muddy area. We know that you witness quite a lot of um, a buffalo that's stuck in the mud in the very dry seasons because they don't have energy, they don't eat quite a lot of a healthy grass that makes the animal itself tending to be very weak in the course of uh, a winter. But I love these animals, they help one another. Elephant are more like um, yeah, the, the buffalo. If one gets struggle, they'll try to help as much as you can. But the elephant, you know that they're a lot more emotional about uh, individual member within the family orientated if he does sick or he does uh, stuck on the mud, all of them they come and help and pick him up and move out. That's reason success rate. Success rate of an elephant is so huge around in the area because they can protect one another. While we are witnessing this elephant moving out, let's take this opportunity and join Cedric with Mohawk. Well, as you can see, Mohawk is coming onto the fire break and slowly moving north. Isn't he a beautiful male lion? Still stunning. And uh, well, he's going north by himself. Very risky going into other males' territories. So that is going to be a little bit of a risky one, but he's coming straight towards the vehicle. How stunning is this? And yeah, he is losing a little bit of mane. Okay, well, he's coming straight towards me. All right. Okay. 
I almost put my leg in there. What do you think? Uh, well, he's like right behind the vehicle. Oh my goodness, he's walking under the tire. Slow movements, Paul. Yeah, how nice was that? It was fantastic, okay, fantastic. Okay, let's go around here. Yeah? I'm just gonna quickly go on to the, the fibre or the main road, Biffles of Boundary, because it looks like he might cross north. If he goes north, then we cannot follow anymore because we do not have traversing onto that property. So I'm just gonna quickly just hold on, hold on. Um, all right. So there's just another vehicle that wants to come see ya. Uh, so handsome, so handsome. Hey, fantastic, uh, Cindy D. It is beautiful, but going north like this, interesting. And uh, at this time of the day, heat of the day, moving around, but he's listening out for something. You can see he's really focused on something that's happening here in the north. He's tiptoeing now inside there. He doesn't want to make much noise. I don't know where the rest of his pride has gone to. I don't know if they have gone north. Maybe he's trying to find them or... It's very difficult to tell what's his idea here. standing and just staring and listening out you can just see once again got that head up moving his head from side to side see if he's going to pick up on any of the noises maybe a scent of something here turn for us, he might turn. But we did hear lions calling last night as well, and this morning, a little bit further north from our mm -hmm. camp. So into Biffles Hook, into this property that's just north of us here. The direction where Mohawk, this male lion, is heading into. But for him being alone like this and going into these areas, it is um, it is really taking a little bit of a chance. As you know, these other males around here, it's a little bit, a little bit bigger and a little bit fitter compared to a mohawk. Well, luckily, good timing. We've got you just in time, eh? Mm -hmm. Just in time. Might go and lie down there. No, nope, he's moving. Well, he is. He's still, but Mohawk is just, his, his eyes, that, that stare of his, his, he's got like very, very spooky eyes. Like this, yeah. you know, and uh, oh, okay, looks like he's going to settle down. That's perfect for us at least. Uh, at least we've got some, still got a view of him. I've got feeling, especially on a hot afternoon like this, to, for him to move like this. And looking up, boys, in the north there, he's, he's picked up on something. Something, maybe another lion that was calling. Maybe a uh, buffalo, I'm not too sure, but he has picked up on something. So I think we are just going to hang back here a little bit and uh, just... wait and see.
you want to touch the lives of future protectors of our Earth? Thanks to our wonderful Wild Earth explorers, Wild Earth Kids is back. Sign your class up for Wild Earth Schools and enjoy a special virtual field trip to Africa with interactive learning tailored for kids. Very warm welcome to the kids from Ludworth Primary School. We'll be dedicating the first hour of Sunset Safaris every Wednesday to our planet's future defenders. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. Indeed, we let the, um, the nature itself talk to us. We have seen this elephant uh, really um, doing what he's doing here, trying to cool down the body system. I mean, pouring himself with water or spraying himself with water. We are seeing elephant now coming back uh, to the other side of the, the bank of this uh, water source. So there will be more more activities right here. Look at uh, this young world, he's really, really enjoying the water source right at the moment. I believe that uh, in most cases, this um, age of an elephant, they love swimming. It could be just because he's lonely. Remember, all the time the elephant, they have to take precautions when it comes to the water hole, even if he can see the other elephant. If he's alone, he's not with the other members. For him to jump down in the water, it will be a difficult thing. Oh, look at that. Uh, the other side elephant holding it look like uh He's leading away. Uh, there's more elephant coming to the other side of the bank itself. You just notice one of the female carrying a heavy kind of uh, a branch of a tree coming down to the water. I don't know what special is on that. Uh, direct there. It's putting down, yes. Mona. Beautiful camera work, BK, BK. Um, really congratulations, BK, for the good work. Oh, look at this youngster. They were here and now coming down. It's very extreme, it's very hot. I think the youngster, they cannot manage to go down away from the water source. So they need as much as they can, really cooling down the body system.
it will be soon after five. I believe that it will be only humid, but it's got maybe a little bit of breeze. I can feel it, a change of weather. Look like it's gonna be windy for the late afternoon. You will never know. And soon it's windy is where the other species are having joy. Unbelievable. Yes. That sounds, it's competition amongst themselves. But it looks like it's now time, you see. Time for water. They're only gonna come down as I'm really witnessing because I can see whether or they need to come down the water source very slowly. And they might be carried on again back to the same amount of the trees. Oh, look at this. The youngster most of the time that like also swimming or be in the water wallowing very cute of course if, if all the head jumps in the tiny little youngster is also gonna do the same even you tend to see them at the lower there most of the time the youngster they love to swim on that water source it's very special water hole for elephant i'm not sure what's exactly there sometimes of course, it's all about the texture of the soil and Africa boasts myriad landscapes. From true forest to true desert. and countless stunning ecosystems in between. The savannas of East Africa are home to nature's most stunning spectacle, the Great Migration. These rolling grasslands are nurseries of abundant life. The woodlands of Southern Africa, sometimes verdant and sometimes desiccated, offer the most intimate insight into the lives of the continent's beloved wildlife. Wherever you are in Africa, the scenic majesty will take your breath away. Well, I do apologize for losing Rex in there and getting some uh, uh, break up on uh, the feed, but uh, that's all right. We are still here with Mohawk on uh, Biffelzook boundary. As you can see, he's still just lying lying down and uh, looking and picking up on something that's happening north of him. No idea what. I did speak to another guide now and they said that uh, the rest of his pride, the Nkuhuma pride, they have gone all the way west, very far west from here onto Simambili and quite far west into Simambili towards Elephant Plains area. So they are very far from the side. So clearly he hasn't got any of the, the backing of his uh, sons here, for now. Uh, he'll be pretty much a, a lone male for a few days until Nkuhumas decide to turn and come back the side, or maybe he decides to head west and try and follow up on them. But for now he's going north, very strange. Very strange. And as I say, for an afternoon like this when it's so hot, you'll usually find and you do find lions are lying flat, but he's still looking. <laughs> uh, Jenna from the UK, look, the male lions don't usually hang all the time with the pride. You must remember they got their own territory. So if it's a coalition of males, so two, three, four males, um, they'll have quite a large territory. And in their territory, they'll have maybe two or three female pride territories. So not all the time will they be with the females. Only really around about maybe 10, 10%, 15% of the time they'll be with the, uh, the pride. The rest of the time the males are doing their own patrolling, patrolling their own territory, and also doing their own hunting. So that's why it's always been that typical myth that uh, male lions do not uh, hunt and all that. But trust me, I'm, in my career I've seen more um, proper hunts and successful hunts by male lions and actually females. So it just shows you if he needs to hunt, they'll hunt. 
with anything with a, a single male like this now that he hasn't got any backing now, so he hasn't got any brothers anymore. He's now you become a little bit more vulnerable, and especially if you, your age is also catching up to you. So, I mean, this male lion is about 10 years old now, and uh, male lions can usually survive 13 to 14 years old. So, you know, he is slowly but surely coming to the end of his prime. And uh, they become like more like nomadic males. And they eventually just tend to get pushed out by younger boys, younger males. And then these older males eventually become nomadic and disappear from the area. But Mahawk is still holding on. He's still thinking that he can hold on to, to this area. His pride pretty much comes through there. So, and he's not looking bad at all. I'm not saying he's totally, the wear and tear has completely got to him, no. I mean, he's still looking good. As I said, his body physique looks great. I mean, I even called him young earlier. I actually called, <laughs> I thought he was one of the young Telemati boys, so it just shows you. You can just, I'm just looking at his behavior. You can see those ears are pointed forward. His head is always moving from side to side. You can see there again, just listening. It's like he did, it seems like he's, he did hear something or he picked up on something, but he's not too sure. He might go and flop down just now. Or, or he might just move further north. All right, as you know that we are entering, uh, or we pretty much have entered summertime, and uh, our time changes is from tomorrow morning. So make sure that you've got a pen and paper. Mark this times down. So tomorrow our sunrise safari, our AM safari, will start at 5.30 and it'll end at 8.30. And then, of course, our live at the waterhole will be at 10.30 a.m. And after that will be our sunset safari, like now, our p.m. safari, which will start at 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. So that's all from tomorrow going to our summer times. If he does go a little bit further north now, and if you do lose him the next half an hour, hour or so, I think what I'll do then I'll tend to go maybe head towards uh, Gowrie Dam and go and follow up on that leopard that somebody saw coming down to drink water. So yes, we might have two cats for the evening. You never know. But for now, we are going to just sit here with our Mohawk and just see what's going to play out here because I just got this little bit of a feeling on something, something is happening here. Welcome to AFRICAM, your window to Africa's wild spaces. Immerse yourself in the captivating sights and sounds of nature. 
With our high-definition cameras, you'll feel like you're right there, in the heart of the action, where every moment is a surprise waiting to unfold. Join our global community of wildlife enthusiasts as we witness nature's drama unfold in real time. Ever dreamed of experiencing the beauty and wonder of the African bush, but don't have months available for an extensive learning program? Look no further than Eco Training's short experiential courses. Designed for those who yearn for a taste of the wild, these immersive programs will give you an in depth understanding of the African bush in as little as seven days. You'll be guided by expert trainers who will lead you through the various ecosystems of Africa and teach you essential bush skills. Over the course of the programs, you'll learn about animal behavior, tracking and identification, as well as the intricacies of conservation and African culture. With the guidance of your trainers, you'll have the opportunity to witness wild animals up close and personal in their natural habitats. You'll also make new friends and create lasting connections with people from all over the world who share your passion for the wild. These courses are the perfect way to gain a deep understanding of the African wild, even if you have limited time. Join one of EcoTraining's six short courses. You will receive a discount when you sign up through the Wild Earth website. Further your journey as a true bush enthusiast today. Yes, of course, it's a good timing for these elephants. It looks like the, the majority of the breeding herd, they're starting to move away from the area, knowing that this is the last uh, half an hour of a day where the sun, it will be still uh, a little bit harsh and strong and hot. But um, as they travel in a direction where they need to go, especially each and every time, elephant is one of the species that they plan all the time, the routine that they need to take, especially when it comes to uh, grazing, they know exactly where they're gonna end the end for, for a day, where they're gonna get more um, grass or even shrubs. They, all of them go in a different location because they are so much experience in different areas that they in the area. Some of these elephant, they don't belong to the same group or head. They are, come from a different head of the elephants so they need to go in an area where they are familiar so it's one of the species that don't just move 
all the routine and uh, area where they move it's planned by a matriarch a matriarch is the female that's very much experienced on this area where he can where she can move and where she can get nice kind of water some of the area of course you find elephant find their own water more especially in riverbed where it's quite a lot of sands some of the area they just prefer certain plant of course as the routine is being planned at 9 10 o'clock they will be at uh, Nlovo dam and from there they're gonna make a loop and come back is how actually this ele elephant most of the time they do and they know that what time they will be here uh, tomorrow and that it pass on from the generation to the next if they need to migrate out here they know the time and the hour in the week before even they move out of the area where they're gonna go which area they will be concentrating young males you find themselves wander around follow big elephant that um, or old elephant that can teach them the skills of surviving because they're no longer in the practice of a matriarch. In a matriarch, they resign or they kicked out because the age it has come for them to go and learn a different sort of uh, skills that they can really um, apply in the early stage. Learn uh, what a beautiful sighting. Yes, of course. See, there were um, BK showing is a buffalo and an elephant all like, seems like uh, they're communicating they're taking the very same direction all of them moving to the east so it might be ending towards the hq there's one beautiful water source there that uh, watered by the pump the water can be so much salty and loved by elephant oh look at this boy here as it walk you can hear the footstep of an elephant <laughs> There's a grass on the back, you can tell that uh, he's trying. He was in one of the water holes that still a uh, lot of grass around and he plucked out and put it up in his back in order to cool down the body system. Oh, look what he's doing. I love this. So practically when we say it, um, elephant first of time because of the heat, it will put water behind the ears more especially from the head is how actually cool down because also there's quite a lot of work i mean if a head if your body is getting quite more warm your body heat it goes to your brain tells your brain it's too hot so you cool down first those i mean those organs that that are first get explored i mean getting heat quite a lot so that's the reason you find the elephant doing that Look at that. Amazing. That is a trunk of an elephant. Some of you never even able to get how the trunks look like. Look like a thumb. They can able to hold on that. There's a baby coming. We join the mother. Seems like more elephants just come from our left to the right. We we'll tend to see the tiny little youngster doing what the mother is doing, cooling down the body system, using the same method what the mother is doing. That elephant just come. You can hear the splash of water.
this time of the year because the elephant they eat a very dry sort of uh, fabric around in the area grass soils and all that so it, it has to come down to the water also because they're so much thirsty walking around during the uh, uh, summer season you tend to see elephant not that much going down to the water they do because it's heat I mean swimming but most cases because it will be water puddles of water everywhere they tend to cool down the body system even in the block where they might be um, grazing or really collecting all these twigs you tend to see them not to come easily in those thickets because they can get excess water even in a drainage system um, natural pans that created by elephants Steve is asking if uh, what I'm not sure something that has work it's unbelievable no we will we'll carry on but well, maybe later on we'll be informed by the uh, final control the question you just break the but this is the used trunk in most cases if the question is related to that uh, it it do works anything that the elephant have it works it could be tusk it could be ears it could be tail it does have purpose on the elephant itself uh, I might cover the question according to what we can hear and break up some of them these elephants they come from far they're very tired what they can do here, sometimes they need to have time before even uh, drinking water, standing still, not to do much, get water and able to uh, really rest because they might be coming from f far north where it might be not uh, a water source and they're getting here. As we, since we've been here, we see elephant coming from different angle, never ever stop. They come and some of them they come and go some of them they come and completely move away continuously heading into the direction where they want to go those elephant uh, that are here or those elephants that have been here some of them they're not going to come back here some of them they just uh, i mean passing by moving in a direction where they need to go some of them they might be in a migration route where they know that it's a shortcut to get here and get water and continuously going to the another water source as they carry on heading south or to the east because we in an open system most of the elephant here they can be at anywhere they want they can be in in far east south up to juma somewhere where we cannot even think about they they move around quite a lot that's raising you find them they don't have permanent area to concentrate they will move from one area to another and of course they move in an area where they're very familiar where they know what's going on on this area if they get to new area where they've never been sometimes we tend to see them
there they're back again. I still would really like to know how deep this water hole is, but I will never be brave enough to swim across it, unfortunately. And then just behind the hippos is even a beautiful Linyala bull coming down to have a drink. Isn't that beautiful? Just turning back, hoping to give an alarm call. I'm definitely hoping it would give an alarm call to tell me that there's the leopard, because this is what we're looking for, is we're actually trying to find whichever leopard was seen on the camera. If anyone had any idea if it was a male or a female leopard, that would be truly helpful. So if you can let us know, that would be great. Uh, it, it might just help me to understand where I need to look. But of course the Nyala has to go and drink behind the only log in this water hole. Great, thank you so much. All the elephant have moved, the buffalo are moving a little bit far away from the water source. What we are waiting, I believe that uh, everyone, it will be quiet here. So we're gonna be here like two, three minutes and see if there's nothing like cat that might be coming here. In most cases, you know that the cats, they need a very quiet moment. If there's no buffalo, there's no elephant, they can move in silently in the area. We know that um, buffalo elephants in most cases when they come across with any cats around in the area they will be really interacting chasing the species itself. So most of the time lions or leopard I believe that the track that they've saw the lions it might be still in the drainage line here behind this dam wall because they reported them at the Impala Plain moving to the west. This is the only area that uh, if they do come out they will come out right here at this water source, drink water and move. Unless if the lions, they're still feeling hot. It's a very hot day, no doubt. There's another elephant coming. You can hear the talking. It's quite a lot of talking here of the Ellis. Oh, there's an elephant to the other side, still in the same uh, tree that uh, they're really busy with. So they might be still lying down or we might uh, Head slowly to the south, looking around. Maybe we might come soon. The sun settled down a little bit, where it gives an, an ability of all the cats start to move because it burns a lot of energy in the body system. They cannot able to move while it's still hot. But you never know, you might live within one or five minutes lines comes into the area but if after drinking i don't think they can go far unless if they chase by elephant at the water source or be really getting prepared to move slowly towards the western ridge kilikopi and that area and slowly slowly but surely given an opportunity It is good. We, we just get uh, a, a question from FC. We are really struggling quite a lot. Uh, apology for that. It's it breaking, so we, we cannot read anything. But um, if elephant wise, we had elephant, but um, general behavior of an elephant, if. Lesson, yeah. The the, the uh, of course a, a very clever question. What is the uh, the baby elephant? The first natural lesson. Remember, uh, elephant uh, is one of the species that they don't have four chamber stomach. We call it um, the caprophagic animal. They do caprophagia. That is a first lesson that they do is to eat its own mother's dung in order to carry the bacteria of the digestion system of the sag itself. 
they get to eat there because all the time when the mother's dung it carries bacteria or then when they eat when they defecate there will be bacteria there and they eat quite more and the bacteria multiplies in the body system on the sack itself so for the youngster they have to eat the mother's dung that is a first natural experience that the young elephant will do they do caprophagia which the terms it ta it says you eat the mother's dung in order to transport the bacteria into the baby elephant sack. So it's, it, that's all about. That is the first lesson. The second lesson that uh, it will, of course, is to know where to move and where to step. With, with danger and lion, they're born having instinct from their mother. They know they know the danger. Even having seen elephant. If they come across of the lions, they will know that uh, this is dangerous. They have that instinct in the body system. So what they do is to make practice how to defend itself and how to make yourself uh, so much powerful to the lions is to eat healthy and intimidate, make yourself big. If you don't eat well, you will be really uh, taken by other species that compete with you. They will underestimate you. So the best thing is to make yourself uh, healthy. You know that survival of the fittest out in the bush. There's other species I've elaborated uh, earlier on from the beginning of the drive. They have to be so strong, eat well, and intimidating by their body size. Is how actually they find themselves in a very good status to respect by other species that they compete with them, is to make yourself healthy and all the time. There's reason time and again you find these guys they like to hang around as far as buffalo, very close to the water source. They look stronger, healthy, because they don't travel that much far. Lion, male lions, is to take care of their mane, grow big, strong, very intimidating from the other lions. To see even elephant or buffalo, seeing a healthy, strong male lion, they have to think twice, because lion have an energy strong. Of course, while we're here, at the uh, leopard dam, we're about to leave. We're gonna take you to Cedric. Thanks, Rex and he's now serving this uh, young male elephant, is uh, feeding all by himself here. And there's no other elephants around here. Looks like he is pretty much a lonesome boy. All right, so I'm listening to an update with a mohawk. I have left that male lion because it was on a cut line. Um, there was a lot of vehicles coming into that area, so we had to make some space for other vehicles to come in there. That's all right. We are now sitting with this young boy. Hello. Hello. Where are you off to? Looks like he wants to head over to Clalumba's uh, big jackalberry tree. As you can see it looks like it might be close to that age where they start getting pushed out from the herd and start venturing on by themselves. And sometimes you'll find like these young males like this one now will join other bigger males and older males just to get some experience from them. But for now he's just uh, oh, wandering on by himself. No key in the world for now. Eating away, he's got the nice dam that's not too far from us. He needs to go for a drink for the afternoon. Uh, standing by. I'm just confirm your road's open. Sorry, uh, yeah, the road's open, yeah. Sorry, go again. I'm just asking how the road's open. Yeah, uh, so we drive most of the roads at 100%. No, it's no issue. So, sorry, I'm just quickly giving the guy an update about our roads. Due to with all the rain that we've had, sometimes we close certain roads as we don't want to create uh, ruts and damage the roads. So. But we've had such great sun yesterday and today that it's dried up you know, all the water around the area very quickly. So the roads are all good to go.
Uh, Kim, the reason why it's alone, um, you know, usually you'll find uh, young males when they get into that, like, you know, the late teenage uh, years, so like 16, 17, 18, like us, you know, we reach that, that real kind of uh, difficult time of our lives, the puberty hits and all that, and um, the same with the elephants. And uh, these young males, they tend to become a little bit aggressive with uh, the little calves that's in the herd. And uh, that really agitates and irritates a lot of the females, like the matriarch and the females in, the, in that herd. And then what they'll do, they'll start pushing these young males out and say, hey, listen, yeah, we don't uh, accept your aggression. We do not accept the way you are handling the young calves. So rather, please uh, start making your way out and uh, do your own thing. So that's why you'll find that uh, these young boys eventually get pushed out 16, 17, 18 years old, and then they go on there by themselves. But they're not all the time straight on by themselves. Sometimes they'll join other males, as I said earlier. So it all depends. But for now, like this young boy, he's got no other males here. It really looks like he's the only one this side. I don't really see any other ele elephants here. And of course, just feeding here along the Mulawati drainage line. All the, nice, all the nice lush grass that's hanging around this side. And of course, my plan of action from here is I'm going to try and follow up again on that leopard that uh, somebody saw earlier today at one o'clock around Gary Dam. So that is going to be our focus point for the afternoon to see if we're going to get any luck on that. But for now, we're just going to spend a little bit of time here with this young boy. Yeah, the black crown chagra. Mm -hmm. Black. Black crown chagra. Black crown chagra. <whistles> mm. yeah, it's a beautiful noise, that mm. bird, huh? Mm. Oh. I love it. <laughs> Always just to try and listen, especially when I come to the drainage line and to the thick areas here. Listen for the boo boo, the southern boo boo. Mm, southern boo boo. Mm. Can you do the southern boo boo? Uh, can yes, it, uh, they, they do duet. You know? mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm. That's the kind of sound. Sound, yeah. All right, I think that's, uh, while the sun is slowly but surely starting to set and all that, I think I want to try and keep uh, a little bit of light so we can do still some tracking on uh, this leopard. So let's get going, let's get going. <laughs> Welcome to Destination Safari. This evening, steeped in history, we are going to be exploring Leonbosch Country House and Shearer's Lodge.
completely missed no I haven't I take it back I was about to say I've completely missed the road that I wanted to drive past down <laughs> and then it came I up. found it I know Juma so well <laughs> <laughs> so Cedric is kind of coming in this direction I wanted to check a little bit further west uh, there, so the reason why I was asking if anybody could kind of get an idea whether it was a male or a female and why it would be helpful it's just obviously the different leopards have got different territories and favorite pathways and things that they can you see it looks like a fly catcher is it okay, i'm gonna go forward and i don't know if you can see in that silver cluster leaf oh. no i pointed they're one, gone one just now i'm sure pointed. they were fly catchers what did you think uh, i think it was an ashy fly catcher one of, an ashy fly catcher there That's we go it. but it's a it's gone now though unfortunately and start. Do you know how hard it was when I got back here to turn the key? Because I have a button. So I kept doing, I kept trying to tap it to start the car. Oh, elephants. Look at that. Oh, it's Wildlife related things. Elephants oh. don't walk away from us. Everything is just moving. Oh, no, never mind. That one hurt me. Oh, here we go. So I'm going to go up right a little bit further. Us. Brilliant. A couple of them. It's actually going to be quite nice with elephants in the golden light. And we'll just stop here. Yes, we've been very fortunate. I feel like everybody has seen elephants today. Rexon, then Cedric, and even us. We've now joined the elephant party. Off he, off he goes. Is it a me here? Yeah, it looks like a young male. The main herd is coming in. and I, I can't wait until the rest of the herd actually comes into a nice view. I'll watch him as he moves away. Because there's a cow in this herd that is enormous. She's huge, but she's not in any hurry. There's a another female, not as big as what I'm talking about. You'll see her in just a moment. Sure, but my gogo is coming through. We'll just see how big she is. She looks like a bull. She's enormous. John, that's a great question. What happens when elephants suck up stones and pebbles? So, John, I think you and I are on the same wavelength here because one of my questions I've asked, and I think you'll enjoy it, do elephants ever accidentally suck up any frogs or fish? Because, like, I've been wondering <laughs> about that, and I've thought about it extensively. Um, I, I imagine, though, they must be able to feel that something is going up and into their trunk. And because it's such a long siphon, you know, they're able to go, oops, and then I'm sure, you know, how they, they can expel the water again. They won't in intentionally put their, their uh, trunks over, you know, small stones and then go, <sniffs> not something that an elephant's into. And then Khat and I, who's on camera with Cedric, we had the most hilarious sighting. Some of you might remember it. I think it was also in May. Uh, on Chitwa Chitwa, we had an elephant stink stink it, stick its entire trunk down a termite mound which was the funniest thing I've ever, well, I've seen some funny things in my life, but at that moment, it was the funniest thing I'd ever seen in my life. It was so great. I've never seen an elephant doing that before, and I never thought that they would do that. So I wonder if that elephant also got tickled by some termites. Okay, let me go forward, Panda. Seeing as though they're moseying down the road, we can catch up with them. Small group, not a big herd. We haven't been seeing any really big herds of elephants lately. Just little pockets of pachyderms. Huh? Pockets of pachyderms. Pockets of pachyderms. We were talking about collective nouns earlier. We were. 
I just like the alliteration. That's like my favorite thing in the whole wide world. I'm just gonna wait because there's an elephant just here. And I don't, I, I, we all know the last thing that I wanna do is upset any animals and that might be a bit of a drama queen and have a heart attack if I, if I do try pass it. So we'll wait patiently. You're starving, ravenous. And she's after all the new green leaves on that uh, bush willow that's desperately trying to grow some leaves. <laughs> so if there are any teachers or uh, anybody that works for a school, whether you're in South Africa, the UK or Germany, who knows, you can be anywhere in the world. If you would like to join our kids' drives, which happen on a Wednesday, uh, you are more than welcome to do so. It's such a great opportunity for kids to learn a little bit more about nature and be inspired. Imagine all the budding vets and zoologists and ornithologists and all those kinds of uh, uh, people. And not everyone, of course, gets to come on a safari. Uh, you can head on over to the Wild Earth website and sign up there. So make sure you get that done, though, before next week, Wednesday. And then you can send us questions. And then your class can literally ask us questions. How cool is that? I think it's quite fantastic. Yeah. I always find the best questions I've ever got have come from children. I don't know how they think of the things. Although my mental age is probably at about four and a half. Between four and a half, about seven, <laughs> I'd say. Everyone's just showing us bums. Okay, let's stop like that. That might be all right. I also would not be eating anything else but uh, but these combritums. Just, can you give us like five seconds to watch you eat before you, oh, thank you very much. They just keep moving away from us. Excuse me, I now ha had a rogue hiccup. They just, they just arrive every now and then. It's quite frustrating. Always the most inappropriate time too. don't think you would have been able to have heard that rumble, but maybe just they're all communicating with one another. But this one elephant, I just wish we could get a proper, proper view of her. This one, where's mom? Oh, there it is, found it. That one, that's that big cow again. She's so impressive. So for the most part, the cows that we see in this area, yeah, very way like, I don't know, three and a half, maybe, no, maybe about three to three and a half tons. This girl's big. If she was a male, she'd def she, she looks like the size of a mature male. Not quite as tall, but um, she's very dense in the best kind of way. Jamie, yes, absolutely. Elephants have to travel very far distances for resources. In this area, the elephants are lucky. Uh, the elephants of the Greater Kruger, there is almost always some kind of water around, whether it's in the form of a, a river or a dam, or, you know, and a lot of the dams, uh, man-made dams that have been created, uh, are being pumped with water and if the it's this big cow chatting to everyone else in the herd sorry she just rumbled again um, and if the rivers are dry but they're big and sandy they can also dig for water so they don't have to move huge distances and then because elephants in South Africa their diet is so varied and there is so much vegetation around there is always something for them to eat however they will also like a lot of animals start following the rain so if there's big rainstorms and up and coming in the distance they'll start moving towards those areas because it doesn't take long for uh, the vegetation to green and up I can already start to see so much new green growth in the grass with a little bit of rain that we had a couple of days ago so in this area no not necessarily uh, we find uh, there's an interesting uh, organization, you've probably heard of it, Elephants Alive. We have had 
uh, Robin Cook, almost Dr. Robin Cook, he came and joined us a couple of months ago and explained all the projects that he was working on. And I forget the distances, but there were some young elephant bulls that were collared and they traveled all the way into Mozambique, really, really far away where they spent quite a bit of time. And I think some of them have come back south again. So they'll just go wherever they want, really. But then you get to places like Namibia, for an example, and Etosha, where freshwater springs are few and far between. And uh, there isn't a lot of viable food in a close proximity, so then they're traveling much larger distances, but here not so much. Okay, I don't think we're going to be able to catch up with the elephants again because they're moving that way in deeper and deeper into the vegetation. But I'm also supposed to be looking for a leopard. <laughs> Attention all Wild Earth fans! It's that time of the year when the sun rises earlier and sets later. And Wild Earth is shifting showtimes. From October, our daily sunrise safari is moving an hour earlier. Live at the Waterhole is moving an hour later and our daily sunset safari is moving half an hour later. Don't miss a moment. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. Well, how nice it is to have these beautiful little grasses and the sun just coming through from behind. Isn't that stunning? I'm not too sure exactly the species of grass here. It might, it might be carrot grass. It might be. It looks more like a carrot grass species. But very difficult to say. But on top of that as well, I just want to say yes, as you know, Wild Earth's mission is to really bring everybody to to nature, we'll bring the world to nature and then uh, if you want to uh, join us on that mission please go on to our website on wildearth.tv and go on the donate button. I just want to thank uh, some of the donors Margaret Cunningham, Stacey Fenn, Michael Malone, Jewel Laboro, Jennifer Lee, Barbara Brown and Andre Kruger. Thank you so much for your donations, we do appreciate it. If you want to join them Please go on to the website wildit.tv and just go on the donate button and find out more about it. How is it? Oh, that's like a, the exoskeleton of a, of a spider. Oh my word, look at that.
Right, as you can see, we are just taking a, a look at uh, the exoskeleton of the spider. Of course, it's shed its skin and it's just waving in the air. So I'm not too sure exactly why it's white spider. It might be a wolf spider. I'm not too sure. It's very difficult to tell from where we are now, but you can see it's attached to uh, the grass and it's just waving away. But how beautiful is it with the sun behind it? It looks quite intense. I love that. That is amazing. And those grass species that you do see, they're very sweet grass species. That is, of course, well, to me, it looks like the carrot grass. Very, seeds are very, very close together, very tight, and uh, very palatable to the grazers. And of course, <laughs> it almost looks like the spider is actually alive when the wind blows it around. But of course, as I say, that is just the outer skin of it. And they shed their skin like that because they've got the new skin coming through and making sure that it is all maintained perfectly. Stacy, yes, everything looks beautiful. In the African sunset, it is really stunning. I mean, look at how small that little thing was on this termite mound. And look at the sunset now behind that big marula tree. Isn't it stunning? Always oh, a sunset is amazing. Yeah, in the African bush. Now you can just picture a leopard that's really sitting on that horizontal branch. Hmm? Imagine a leopard lying on their paw. Yes, what do you yes, think? Yes, it will be a very great picture and uh, it will, uh, very mm, gorgeous. Yeah, picture mm. perfect. Perfect. Eh? perfect. Yeah, picture perfect. perfect. Picture. Yeah, exactly. Perfect picture. Mm. Unfortunately, there's no leopard. <laughs> the sun and then the tree is there, but there's no leopard. <laughs> but you never know. You never know. Mm. <laughs> All right, so of course, it looks like uh, Taylor was also doing a Aubrey's and the same, so we had the exact the same idea and uh, I think I might just leave it a little bit further south um, because I just spoke to another guide about uh, Shadulu, a female leopard and she's been up and down apparently in Simambili, Arethusa but like close to Juma's boundary and she's been pacing up and down and looking a little bit thin um, so yeah we are going to try and very shortly try and go and see if we can see if anything has crossed into Juma on the western side. I don't know if there's Jordan still there. Let's go. Let's go. Alrighty, let's uh, move on. We are going to move on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alright. <laughs> so, well, we're going to continue south. Taylor is coming north. So, we are going to be passing each other. So, let's head over to Taylor. I'm testing the 4x4 capabilities. Do you want to watch? <laughs> I would never drive over a termite mound ever in my entire life. No one should be driving over termite mounds in case you're concerned. And I wonder, do some of you shout at us on the TV like most people shout at a sports game? I've just, I'm just wondering, are there people going, she doesn't know what she's talking about? Zebras are white with black stripes or, you know, I don't know, things like that. Do you think that's possible? No? <laughs> Andrew's just Very sitting quietly. Possible. But I thought you were referring to your driving more than, more than your animal knowledge. Well, Andrew, with that comment, I'm going to find a buffalo on your, a buff, <laughs> buffalo, a buffalo thorn on Andrew's side of the car. Yeah. I was just thinking about that now and I can just picture people going, no, 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 Taylor. I mean, I do it to myself in my head. 
Oh, look, a bird. Andrew, this one's for you. Oh, a bird. Let's zoom in on that bird there. Don't point it? at it. No, I'm just going to lift my binoculars. Oh, no, that's pointing. Oh, not really. It's so, a little bird sitting on a, a tree. It's a little bird with a forked tail. It's a fork-tailed drongo. Sorry, I'm listening to rustling. I'm also hearing really interesting It's a rustling. lot of rustling in the grass, and it's an, seen as though I know what pangolins now sound like when they move around, but it's not pangolins, it's still dwarf mongoose. Ah, yes. Andrew? Yeah. Those are going to be harder to That's not a bird. Please, can we stay focused? Oh, there's some... <laughs> You you've, you've rubbed off on me too much. I need to go back to my day job. You can't look at other things that don't have feathers. Okay, no, fair <laughs> enough. Back to the drongos then. No, we need to see. We might actually have to... <laughs> the drongos are gone. Let me... Uh, the mongoose sauce is scattering. And the drongos are alarming. And Michelle S has actually said that she looked at us sometimes on the screen. Like we're sports gate, especially when it's like, Taylor, there's a leopard, there's a leopard on your right. Because we know I've driven past so many leopards live in my life. I mean, we all have. Remember that one time with Kuchava? That was so embarrassing. Okay, I think if we sit very still and quiet, we, I, I didn't mean to park on this termite mound. But let's just see, because they're all gathering around here. There's one just behind and to the right. There's actually one on the left-hand side of the mound. Oh, there there we is go. as well, yes. Hello. Soft, I think they're all going to come chattering. here. There we go. Hi. Welcome. What a sweet little thing. Welcome, little mongoose, mongooses, mongai. I prefer mongai for many <laughs> mongoose. Oh, they're, they're even <laughs> on the top. Look at them. They're so relaxed. They don't care about us. This is awesome. So we don't very often get to see dwarf mongooses close. I think that they are going to be sleeping in here, which is great for us, as we would probably be able to see their whiskers now. Look at them. Yeah, you probably can't hear it on camera now but they've got this very soft little chattering noise that they're doing consistent like just all the time just checking in with each other hey hey i'm here i'm here where are you this is so awesome they really are the cutest things oh look at them just sitting there hi what you doing staring they look like they can't see any teeny tiny little uh, little pups. Not exactly with this colony, but we'll try and see if we can see if there's a female that's maybe pregnant. I just keep looking. So fascinating. They seem to be fascinated with something at the vehicle. They keep looking down and underneath, but this is a good vantage point. And the fact that they turn their heads and actually look away from us too is great because it just shows how relaxed they are. If they were not relaxed, they of course would not still be sitting on this termite mound, but I feel like that's also self-explanatory. Wow, it's like the perfect pose. Look at those long claws that they have too. This is a great chance to see them. <laughs> now Jenna, you have brought back a sighting of mine from a very long time ago. You said it's hilarious when they play dead. I don't know if we'll ever get another sighting like that. I think that for me is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Uh, they don't always perform thanatosis. Uh, I have seen a yellow mongoose from uh, that occurred like where I'm originally from, the Eastern Cape. I have seen yellow mongoose death feigning before, not thanatosis. I don't know why I said thanatosis. Is, no thanatosis, death feigning, that's the right thing. Autotomy is the one where they lose, well, they'll like sacrifice a limb, specifically tails. Sorry, for a moment I confused myself with all the big words here. I should just stick to the little ones, the ones that I know best. But uh, they might just sit up there. Maybe we'll get lucky. We'll see them do a bit of uh, preening. And just wait patiently because this is actually just so great. 
Probably one of the better mongoose sightings I've had in a while. See, one of the best things about watching birds is when you stop and watch a bird, you often see all sorts of other wonderful things too. Yes, Andrew, you're not wrong. <laughs> this is all because of the Django. Just you reminding reckon? you. Well, it's a pity that we don't have an ambient mic at the moment, otherwise you would be able to hear the soft chur, chur, chur. They sound like little birds. Andrew, the video guy, you've just asked, do they stay alert through the night for predators? So they go to sleep, and they sleep in like a mound like this that's got all these little chambers and all these tunnels, uh, and they sleep quite soundly. Now if something like a snake were to go into a, a, a one of the tunnels and it's only a one way in, one way out, uh, they're going to find themselves in a spot of trouble and they can get eaten, and that's quite often what happens is that at night time, uh, little sleeping spots of whether it be uh, meerkats or, you know, mongoose, um, where where they can typically you know have an entire family eradicated because of something along those lines, uh, but they are ferocious predators. So if they can, they'll try and fight back, especially in that sort of thing. So my answer to that would be probably not. I think they all cuddle up and sleep quite tightly. If they if it's something loud like a big predator, maybe they're going to wake up, but they're not going to come out of their mound. It's more risky for them to at night time to escape from their mound rather than to just hide away in that little inconspicuous piece of sand, really. But uh, wasn't that such a great sighting? Off they run and we will probably do the same. World Animal Day is here and Wild Earth is rallying for a battle of the ages. One naturalist reigns victorious and the time for redemption has arrived. It's Safari Bingo. Catch the chaos and contention as our naturalists compete to spot the most animals. Join us on our sunset safaris and spot the next sovereign of the safari. Wild Earth, we are Safari. Great. I'm gonna end my drive uh, almost the area where we have seen the the two hyena in the morning uh, moving in a block, carrying um, 
a piece of uh, impala meat come from the east. Look like maybe there was a leopard that made a kill around that area and the hyena stole in the, the carcass. It's perfect time now for hyena also to get active. The leopard lion get active. Also wild dogs might get active. <clears throat> so I'm now on the western side coming down Zoe, 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 Zoe's Road. So I'm just going to take a look. Maybe, maybe we get the Shadulu or Tortoise Pan coming this side. So that's my main thing. If not, it's all right. We'll maybe look for some nocturnal birds. Slowly but surely the sun is starting to set. We can maybe find an owl or two or even a little owlet. Night jaws. Yeah, wait for that sun to set. Look for nocturnal ones. You can hear it. Oh, to drink, to be to drink. Yeah. You can hear it. It's calling in the background. Oh, yeah, there. Oh, but we don't have them um, now. So we got this uh, uh, Shelley's Franklin. <laughs> Maybe you do it better than I do it. There it is. <laughs> now, of course, uh, as you know, Paul practices that every single day. So. <laughs> Very well done, Paul. That was, yeah, uh, thank you. That was a, manio a magnifique. Mm. A magnifique. Mm. Beautiful. And the thing we were actually, Paul and myself were talking about the Shelleys this morning, remember? Yes, and we were actually saying morning, that. Yes. Uh, we get to hear them, but you never get to see them. Mm. Never see them, and um, mm. yeah. Very secretive, very skittish. Very skittish, yeah? mm. Mm. Like for Franklins and Spurfowls, you know, most of them are very more relaxed. Mm. It uh, looks like the Shelleys is just one of those ones that it doesn't want to hang around for a, for a screenshot. <laughs> All right, uh, Paul, we've got a bit of a challenge for you here now. Yes. So, there is one of our viewers, old Steve, and he's uh, asking, what other bird calls can you make? I can make uh, quite a few of them, uh, like the Emerald Cuckoo, Marina Trogon, and also Pale um, uh, Spotted Owlet. All right. That one, if I imitate it, uh, uh, it, it, it comes. Oh, wow, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. I can call it without using a tape. Yeah, yeah, and sure. also, I sometimes doing it to call, uh, if I don't see birds, then to call, uh, uh, if I uh, uh, make the uh, each call, mm. then other, they come in just to investigate, to see yeah. who is calling around. All right, well, mm. you said, uh, I'm very interested in the Narina Trogon side of things. Can you do the Narina Trogan? Okay, I can do it. You can try, yeah. Okay, I'm going to turn off so we can listen nicely. Mm. Wow. That's not oh enough. my word. Mm. I thought I just saw Narina Trogan here. Yeah, where is my binox? Where is it? Yeah, it, it, it the, the, the word Narina. Mm. It's named after a Hottentot girl from Eastern Cape. Okay. She was so beautiful. Her name was Narina. Oh, so yeah. that the, the Narina Trogon is mm. it's got a very nice bright yeah. uh, uh, red on the, the red belly yeah. and uh, with a uh, uh, green at the back, back. and oh, yes. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Well, on that note, talking about birds, <laughs> let's get over to Rexon with his bird in Pridelands. 
Wonderful. Super. It is magic. Beautiful right here. We are having such a beautiful, beautiful bed here, which it's one of the most bed that I love the most. It's it really, really amazing to see this uh, species, this species of bed when it do a mating display. It's unbelievable. You tend to see them flying high and uh, really from above to pretend as it's gonna crash let us really get silence of a moment and see what look like it's about to give us uh, the mating display if anyone knows this uh, species of best can you please able to really identify it my eyes are a little bit uh, low it goes with the light teasing it's magic as it it cross I mean calling it might uh, able to show the mating display so I have to be silent and give these pieces a chance listening quite a lot you know sometimes you tend to see it after calling you will stop and listen and call for the second time and take off Beautiful. Seeing this bed doing the mating display, getting the fluffy feathers, right time. Our oh, total, total display, it's such amazing and beautiful. All the time, they likes to be in a I can hear the other one calling. They're starting. Look at that. Fluffy feathers. You just want to groom itself. Very territorial. The, these species of birds are able to have their own area, more especially in a very elevated area where the grass is very short, it likes to mat or flat grass, of course. They hunt around in the area, insects and other small creatures that might be on the ground, like uh, centipede, you tend to see them, hunt them quite a lot. But I believe that as it's starting to be really grooming itself, it might show a beautiful mating display. It's really confusing, you find two or three together, in most cases, I had uh, my tracker long ago, he spotted them as a uh, baby ostrich. But there's a similarity when the baby ostrich is still young. Look at that, getting ready.
those sounds just go straight through you. You might find that the area where it's really lying down that is a perfect spot where the female might be really gonna take place when or nesting because most of the time most of the species of course if it does have female when it comes to how to take care of eggs they rotate if a female leaves male will come and sit a male a female comes back a male will come back in the same spot and make sure that you take care of that particular spot i've seen green pigeon when they nest such unbelievable the female will, will sit when the male comes back a female will leave a, a nest and be in the area where you can find food. So when they come back, they all exchange. So there will be no other species brought parasite to, to have a chance to take off their eggs. great it's wonderful it's really lying down at the moment or sitting down this is the the perfect area we will always come back in the area when we drive past in the area to check if we can able to see him or not because it's really now it will be the great uh, sort of an area to all the time concentrate i can hear one calling from the distance Maybe it will be the partner. The reason why it doesn't have more kind of concern, because you might know that uh, it might be the female that uh, they partner together. Most species out in the wild here, yeah, you know that they are, <clears throat> once they get together, they might be monogamous for life. From here, with this uh, species of bird, let me take you to Talia. On the move. Okay, we have rushed to the dam. We're actually on our way here, and then we were given reports that there were vervet monkeys alarming, literally only one minute away, which is great. And the Egyptian geese 
also thankfully were shouting about and uh, assisted us in finding this big male leopard. I'm just gonna see who it is. Uh, and I think that he was in fact just sleeping where everyone saw him, whoever saw him on the dam cam. I think he is probably just lying down in the shade. So I'm glad we didn't come and disturb him. Nice full belly. Is it Malati? I did see a scar across his face. Oh, yeah, he's behaving like Malati. He's a little bit shy. Just sit here, it's just there. So we're not gonna be able to follow him, not just because he's not very happy, a little bit on the nervous side, but he's going into an area that's impossible for us. I'm gonna go backwards on the damn wall. And I think we should be able to get a view, but it looks very much like Moroati. Last time he was seen, was at Nkoro, which is very far to the, uh, the east. Sorry, I have to just focus on drivers. Won't be very popular. There he is. Just coming out over there. He'll pop up behind that bush. Full belly. Where have you been and where have you come from? Also got the hippos chiming in. Maybe he has a kill down there. Perhaps he's been feasting for the last couple of days. And we know that he is the ghost and he doesn't spend a lot of time up and around and during the middle of the day. Um, or even just during safari times for the most part. We typically see him at night, but he's slowly starting to get better with the with the vehicles. But like I said, we, we're we not going to follow him and push him. We'll watch him for as long as we can in this drainage line. Otherwise, we just undo all the work that we've been doing to try and get him to relax a little bit better. And even though he trotted uh, just in front of us, he did slow down immediately. But it's just important to give them room and and also just to, to read their behavior. There we go, scent marking. And off he goes. So the problem with this drainage system is that it bobs and weaves, but there's no real way in there without making a lot of noise. Uh, so, yeah. Cindy D, you said great job, Taylor. Well, I think it was great team effort here so i was sent an image of where the leopard was last seen in this pocket of trees just uh, just over to the left of us and i was coming back and i was my plan was to actually go off-road and go in there uh, and then before that could even happen we we're told the vivid monkeys were alarming and then obviously as i got to the dam the egyptian geese and then we could quickly uh, got a quick view so yeah so he's gone through here it's a huge so far away from the next road that I can kind of go down I don't think we're gonna see him again unfortunately I'm not gonna off-road uh, in here to try and get another view of him but we'll see if he does walk up and out there's quite a few open places so as we drive I'll just see if he does maybe go a bit further south which is that way maybe he comes back up here What we'll do now is we'll just listen and maybe we'll hear some alarm calls from birds. It will help us pinpoint his position. Vivid monkeys are still alarming in the distance, but they do that even when the animal is out of sight. Okay, let's carry on a little bit further. We aren't even able to see down into this, uh, this drainage system at all. We'll just go along it slowly.
didn't look like he was going to maybe go and sit down with him scent marking. It would be lovely if he just walked up the side, mm. but I think I'm being a bit, bit cheeky and hopeful. There he is. I have spotted him. Oh, sometimes uh, I want yes. to drive Wendy into, not Wendy, I'm in Rusty. Oh, Panda, it's a tight view, but do you see where I'm talking about? In that sandy patch there. Okay. St stay like that. I'm going to go forward for you, okay? Don't, don't go out. Sorry, everyone, I'm going to... I was hoping that would be a slightly better gap, but there he is just sitting in that sodic patch. That's the other reason why it's not great to off-road down and in this area is this entire space. On this side it's better, but on the southern side of where, or when starting where Mamwati is, this area is very sensitive. So it's quite susceptible to erosion. We see a lot of gully erosion here and there's not a lot of ground cover. Most of the nutrients have all been leached and washed into lower lying areas. So definitely should never ever off-road in a sodic site, so we won't be doing that. But again, even not just that reason, but the fact that he is quite nervous. So he settled down. I thought he was actually just gonna keep on going on the move. And as we were driving by, I thought, oh that looked like a head. And then I was uh was glad as a reverse and I I did see him again. I wonder when he arrived here. He's done a big walk around. I mean, I don't know how long he actually spent in the the eastern eastern side of the Sabi Sand around in Coral. I didn't see any other reports on social media. Stacy, you said pretty boy. Absolutely, he is indeed a pretty boy. Just taking the moment to relax after a nice big drink. His belly didn't look too full, so there's, there's just so many Steenbok and Dacre that are around at the moment, which are perfect antelope for him to gobble up in one meal. But who knows, maybe he's got an impala or an inyala, even a bushbuck dangling from a tree in here. But if he's if he has been here for quite some time, I, I would imagine we would have seen him on the dam cam though. To at least come down for a drink. But that has not been the case. And you're also vigilant on that uh, live live camera. It's uh a huge help to all of us, especially waking up in the morning and getting that sneaky insight of what could have happened. It's just obviously not uh, not the greatest, perfect view of him. And it is starting to get quite dark. So when we when we have to go into infrared, we probably won't stay here. I'm going to keep a spotlight off of him because uh, the reason being is that our infrared light will not reach him from here and that's a light way of, that animals aren't necessarily affected by but if I put the spotlight on him he might not be too impressed with us so we'll probably just let him do his thing and appreciate the, the view that we had of him. Welcome to AFRICAM, your window to Africa's wild spaces. Immerse yourself in the captivating sights and sounds of nature. With our high-definition cameras, you'll feel like you're right there in the heart of the action, where every moment is a surprise waiting to unfold. 
Join our global community of wildlife enthusiasts as we witness nature's drama unfold in real time. See, these impalas heard something that side. All of them just looked at once to the west. But no, they're all settled now. Maybe they just heard something and now they're all relaxed again. Sometimes you'll find different species around here, maybe some zebras or a wildebeest. I haven't seen our wildebeest for a long time, old George, but you never know. Might see him later on. But anyway, well, we are going to still just uh, move a little bit further, close, or actually closer to camp area. Let's head over to Rex and in Pridemans. Great from Cedric, uh, we are on the Lupans now joining Marshall. This area is very well known for troops of baboons that love to roost around in the area. And baboons are very good indicators when it comes to predators moving in and out in the area, even from the distance. You know that uh, the primates, the vivid monkeys and all baboons, they have a very good eyesight. Sometimes the lamb calling of a baboon or velvet monkey, to me, is a very serious. I trust on these animals when they get to see uh, predators moving in the area. Let's see, we'll, we'll drive along this uh, road, but I think from last night, they were shouting furthermore to the north. Maybe they move out of the area, seeing leopards or lions taking over, coming to the surrounding. And this area where we are, Ngati Pride likes the most. And there's one certain male that, uh, male leopard. During my stay here at uh, Pridelands, I follow him a lot, but very skittish. He ended some way. Yeah. So after dark like this, 
So going back towards uh, Anjabu Dam, that part works. We might see cats around that area. Who knows? We're far from Lepet Dam. One of the area by now, it will be the best if you hang around those areas. Able to see who is coming around the water source. Janet asking how many uh, lions that reside here at uh, Pride If I look at uh, the pride of uh, Ngati Pride, they recorded 14 individuals, but there's new males that reported also get in and out in the area. Two, it might be not in the same coercion, but one look like an old male. One look like a young male, very physical, healthy. I haven't come across with these two, neither, around in the area. So there might be more to the Boston area to the east. Because I was thinking by now, the Ngati Prat might be back in the area of the Cubs. But you might realize that a male has established a territory. You might find that he's not really interested to extend to the west. Not surely that uh, there's no other male lions operating in the area. Sometimes because of the female health cubs or also in the area where he used to patrol and being territorial on that particular area, he introduced the female in his own spot, which is the comfortable zone. He doesn't want to move out of the area. By now, the cubs might be moving and join the rest of the pride on the kill, you know that in three months, the cubs in 16 weeks, they will be able to join the mother if they do have kills. But uh, I haven't had any report of any lions with the cubs yet in the area. We still have to wait. Sometimes the Ngadi pride themselves, the master to move the cubs, encourage them to move from uh, the area where they operate because this is the territory of Ngati Pride. Here at Pride Land, it's only one pride that is existing in the area is Ngati Pride. It's not like um, in other area where you find two, three uh, different pride overlap in the area. It's such a huge area, of course, around the area where you might see or two pride or up to three that might be getting in and out in the same area, but uh, hardly here. The land population, furthermore, to this side, they are not uh, really active this side. They are active to the east and to the north. But one day, as the new male comes in, that's a very good sign that uh, there is uh, other pride existing not far from the area. It can happen one day soon to see new pride. Of course, while we're still looking around here, Let's take you to Taylor. Oh, we're just having one last glance at Gari Dam, the, gam that, the dam that keeps on giving. Well, it's given us hippos, it's given us birds, and it has given us a leopard to end it off. However, we don't have much time left this evening, so I know not me, but Andrew would like to say something to you. Yeah, I think it's wonderful that we just wrapping this up in such a fantastic way. I think it's been such an incredible experience for myself and Paul from BirdLife South Africa's side to have this partnership with Wild Earth and to be able to come on and have this, this bird focus for our Heritage Month campaign. And, you know, it's really great to have the support of organizations like Wild Earth that are willing to help us get our messaging out about conservation and also about making birds and nature more accessible for everyone in South Africa and around the world. 
and that's their mission as well. So it's really great to work with a like-minded organization. And I just wanted to say thank you to all of the viewers out there for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, we'll do a lot more of these kinds of things. I think this is a really good budding partnership. And thank you to the Wild Earth team for having Paul and I. But, uh, yeah, just a wonderful partnership. Thank you. Awesome. Here we go. But it's not the end. You can still use the apps. You can still do absolutely everything there's plenty of challenges on birda and keep an eye out on uh, bird life essays websites to see if there's uh, anything interesting and up and coming right we're going to carry on and see what else we can find maybe we get lucky and we have a white-tailed mongoose that we had uh, was, it, was it last night yeah it was last night for the sunset safari but maybe we can just have one last look and appreciation of gauri dam It's in the nature of a lions. If they start to uh, really separate themselves or break away, it, it could be all about food, competition, and also it can be the accounting a new male that uh, it gives the sub adult a bit of a pressure to move off because it's how actually it works. A new male gets into new pride. The offspring that doesn't belong to him, it has to be taken down. So it's very scary to see that. But look like the Ngadi Prat, all the our spring have survived from this new mouth.
great stuff. I'm just moving here. Uh, this is more preference of uh, the buffalo, lions, leopard. The road that I'm taking on here, yeah, I've seen a number of uh, lions coming from the west, coming down to the water source. Let's see if we might uh, find something at the uh, and love them. I'll be so much excited if I can find uh, the leopard there. Jacqueline, what is my favorite thing being in a bush? Um, what is best to me is to track and find uh, uh, a leopard, more especially if a leopard made a kill or a leopard to have cubs, that is my best. And all that comes from hard working. I, I like to, to really work hard to find uh, this animal. You know, trekking is it's, it's an art. It's something that uh, you need to understand it, you need to interpret it. So if you don't interpret, it, it's something that uh, you would never ever find anything. So with my skills over many years, it, it, it really helps me, even if I'm at home, as a farmer, I can track anything and until I get to uh, finalize it in a possible way. So that's raising, I love to be in a bush, tracking lions, tracking leopards. It makes me happy a lot. And I also understand the behavior of different characters out here. So that uh, it becomes more my passion. Like if I find a particular elephant that really I want to understand the breeding head of an elephant and analyze what it's all about with them, that is, uh, I, I really love the most. And most of the thing that uh, I do, it become more, it, it's really rewarding because I'm able to know to the best of certain individual or certain character. If you look at all leopards in different areas that were check a lot and able to even well habituated to human being and read the animal itself, which is, is more important. I'll be in a bush. And the video guy, thanks for your comment and thanks for you to be with us uh, for the afternoon. We really appreciate it for your present. It is indeed. As team of Waldef, we all appreciate you. I will appreciate on that behalf. Lovely, the beautiful, beautiful uh, afternoon. Uh, I think now it's more breeze. I wish I can stay in this area, driving around, and I believe that uh, it will be more predators that will come out. Definitely, I believe that. One thing for sure with this area. During the course of a day, it's very hot, but soon the sun goes down, it's a nice breeze. I love this area due to that. I'm, I'm approaching the water source before I close, but there's vehicle that's ahead on us. I don't think it's any activity, but I see vehicle stopping there. I'd love to appreciate everyone that uh, really be part of our afternoon drive. We really appreciate for question, comments, 
and all the interaction as we are the live interaction experience we really appreciate for your present from here at uh, echo training wild wild f safari live we, we also really appreciate a lot all the questions that have come through indeed at the dam is nothing from myself Rexin this afternoon and uh, BK behind the camera thank you so much until we get to meet you in the morning thank you features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised.